Hello YouTube, welcome back to another video. And in today's video we're gonna be doing a what if. Being the thumb what if the the thumbnail of the what if is right here. This is gonna be a universal intro from now on. So yeah, I'm sorry about that. Until I can get more time, because I do have school, summer school at least, I won't be able to post any really good intros. This is going to be an intro for a while. So, I hope to see you later. Join the Discord server, link in the description, and let's get in to the what if. of this entire seven days of a movie week now in a recent po one of my recent posts i did a poll of what you guys wanted so i'm going to be updating you guys since some of these what else movies will be pulling into probably since it's starting today on wednesday movie week will end on next wednesday so some of the what ifs that you guys voted for will be done in movie as, as a movie rather than as a entire series and from then on, um, from the rest for the rest of the week on uh, Wednesday, I will I won't be posting. And then on Sunday, I'll start recording a new what if, a new what if series so that I'll figure it out what it is. So just to let you guys know. Now today's what if is what if Deku was Toby Rama's reincarnation. So let's just get into the what if. Now the what if starts off with Toby Rama, currently during the fourth Shinobi War, or actually currently at the end ending of the fortune of the war after Kage has defeated been defeated and they summon Naruto, Sasuke, Sakura, Kakashi and all the Topis back. Now after Tobirama is currently um looking down as he sees Martyr's dead body as he comforts his brother. Tobirama begins to think maybe maybe the world be in good hands. As he finally decides to let himself fade away. Only to be, um, only to open his eyes when he feels something tight constricting around him as he is currently being born. As I'm going to skip the whole birthing process because I honestly don't know how that even goes. Like I know exactly how it works, but still I don't want to describe that. I I have I have problem reading scenes in in the fanfics that I read sometimes. So I wouldn't even want to describe this to you guys. But anyways. That's beside the point. Now, um, basically, what am I gonna keep it? Um, Toby Rama would open his eyes once again once he feels that he is finally free. As Toby Rama looks around, only to see a woman with green hair and a man with black hair. As Toby Rama must think, so I was reincarnated like that Ashura kid into my brother, and who later reincarnated into Naruto. Mm, this would be fun, but I sense nothing's changed. It's as if my body is basically just a child. Oh, and I still have all my chakra, I just can't use it. My body is basically just putting a limit, so I'll have some time to redo all this. But I can feel my body is as if it's, as if it's constantly changing itself to adapt to my experience of my previous life, I guess. As Toby Rama sees his parents, as his parents begin to be having conversation, why is his hair white? What are these red markings on his face? Why is his eyes red? As none of the this has not happened to anybody. As the doctors say, it might be because of his quirk. They don't know. Your doctors look at um, Izuku to see that he actually is quirkless, in a, in a sense. As the doctor is talking with this, with um, you know. When the parents tell him that when the parents ask, he says that it's not a quirk, but he doesn't. He said he could do a DNA test or something. As both parents are busy with this to find out, Izuku does have some of their DNA, but most of the DNA is overridden by Toby Rama. As this goes on, Izuku is eventually brought home and continues on with his life. At the age of three, when he's finally able to walk and everything, do everything like Wade Run and everything. 
Suzuki Ryujin is training his body. And seeing that he knows that he can't really use his excuse none of his ninjutsu yet because his chakras, his body's only allowing him to exert in a certain amount of chakra up until probably a certain, from what he can guess, the age of maybe 16 or 17. He won't be able to be, he won't be at his full power. So he decides to just do physical training to keep his body in shape, along with work on improving some of his ceiling up. His armful and jutsu skills, and to be honest, this Toby Law will be extremely OP. Not only due to the fact is that once he turns 17, he has his, all of his chakra from his previous life, but he has not yet reached his peak in this life, which means that his chakra reserves will continuously grow after that point, maybe even reaching the level of Hashirama's if I decide on that. And then this what if I will be making UA in college rather than a um, high school due to the fact is I just stated that his that his full power won't be reached until 17 so yes that's why I'm doing that I want him to be at full power when going to UA to take the to take this to take the school by storm so Izuku would uh, or Toby Ramon would obviously grow up more as Izuku Midoriya he grow up much the, pretty much the same he would be friends with with Bakugo but he would be a lot more cold and you know, he only really shows his rare smile to Bakugo every once in a while. And when Bakugo gets his quirk and um, you know, eventually Tobiron reveals to Bakugo that his quirk was a buck Tobiron will realize Bakugo is like pe those people who pick who hate the quirkies. When Bakugo begins to make fun of him and tries to beat him up, only for Tobiron to take him down pretty easily. As Toby Rama says, well, there goes that friend. As Toby Rama is continuing on with his life, he continues on improving his jutsus. With one jutsu in mind being the the flying Raiji, he's taken. He's seen Minato seal. He basically had it on his body, so he basically kind of analyzed it and could see how it worked. As he uses that to basically create a well to basically improve his own seal to make it faster, much like Minato's, how Minato's was, to being able to also being able to place seals with just his chakra alone. He would also um, eventually turn the age of six, and on this day, Zuko and his parents would be heading to a certain place. Now little did Izuku know, this day could change his life forever. As once they get there, his parents show Izuku that they are at a um, are in a forest and they will be going camping for this year, for his birthday this year. And Izuku is extremely happy. Well, Toby Rama is so happy to be back in somewhat of his element, being surrounded by nature itself and in trees, rather than being in a whole city of sorts. So, you know, he enjoys himself. But one day, he stumbles upon a villain base in this um, forested area. As he sees where he's at, Toby Rama begins wondering, yo, like, yo, what's happening? As event as the villains would eventually spot Toby Rama, as you know, he's still a child, he, and you know, he's still a child and doesn't have really have that much access to his techniques. So they will spot Toby Rama and begin chasing him. As he began running towards his parents, telling them they gotta go, but it would eventually be too late, as the villains had caught up to Toby Rama, and would have killed his both of his parents right in front of him, which would have sent Toby Rama in a rage. You know, um, temporarily unlocking his full ability. As Toby Rama feels his chakra, Toby Rama then uh, holds up one hand sign for the water style water dragon jutsu. As he throws, as the uh, water begin, as he begins to pull water from the atmosphere, from the air itself, as it begins to form a massive water dragon. As the dragon then begins to tear through all of the villains, as the, it begin, the, the front of the dragon head slowly begins to be covered in nothing but red. A whole lot of red, actually. As Deku, as Toby Rama sees this, will be extremely distraught. He had basically gotten his parents killed. 
he doesn't know what to do now. He can't go back. I mean, what is he going to do? Who is he going to go to? Picture no one would want to adopt a quirkless child. So, Toby Rama takes it upon himself. With his chakra temporarily, acti temporarily activated, Toby Rumble would transport to where his clothes were, like where his armor, his armory was in his previous life, and like in his life as Toby Rama Senju, rather than as his Yuka Midoriya. He will basically transport the Yu Yuzu Fly Rising, which actually already has a mark on both his armor and his sword. The, um, not the Thunder God um, sword, like the sword that, um, if you, I know you, some of you guys play Shinobi Striker, maybe, if you've seen, I believe I've done some gameplay with Shinobi Striker, but if you've seen Shinobi Striker, you see that there's a, uh, there's a sword with a, um, a white and green sword, I'll try to put it up, I can't really describe it that well, but basically that sword, as he sees his armor there, as Toby Rumble decides to find out where he's at and to train here for the next couple of years. So obviously Toby Rama will venture from where his, his things are, you know, using the seal and his chakra to get out of the place where he's current, where his armor is currently hidden. As he then sees that he is no longer in Japan, but is now in South America. As he begins to train himself out here, learning many things. Well, improving himself, even more improving some of the jutsu that he's now began getting more access to his chakra over the years. Whereas this has been, this is where we're going to get into a a ten year a ten year time span, which means Deku is currently sixteen. If I'm not mistaken, I believe I did say he was seventeen, so so let me say nine years. Well, he's now sixteen, as Deku would then. Um, would finally almost have his reserves finally full, but Deku, um, but Toby Rama would sense that he uh, he's already in peak condition. He can already fit his armor, and I did have to make some modifications to make it bigger since he has seem seemingly gotten a little bit bigger from his physical training throughout all the years. He had gotten readapted into Kenjutsu. He had basically revamped all of his skills. And had to relearn. Basically, he got his body used to re to doing every hand sign, doing calligraphy with seals and everything. Toby Rama had gotten his body used to all these things. As you would think, next year, I'll go back, and I'll finally be ready to go back. And then, I'll become a hero. I'll make my parents proud. I'll bring peace to this world. And sadly, I see Naruto and Sasuke could not do it. Permanently, at least. As Toby Rama began, continues his training, because we're going to time skip to the age of 17. As Toby Rama puts on his armor and his sword, as he then gathers, steals away the entire place, which is a room within a scroll. So he places the scroll on his back. As Toby Rama says, hmm, I guess it's finally time for me to leave and go back to Japan. I wonder how it's been since I have left. As Izuku disappears in a in a um, white flash, rather than a yellow. Fl I was just about to say yellow flash. I'm not a lot. He would disappear in a yellow, yellow and blue flash, appearing back in the forest where his parents had been killed and where he had buried them, as he had left a seal there. As Izuku would come and visit them every once in a while. Zuko would arrive as he would tell his mother and father that he's back and for good for now at least. That he's going to take care of those villains that are currently in that base right up right up ahead. It's his first act of being back here. As Deku or Toby Rama would then walk up to the uh, villain base before then um, knocking on the door. Causing the villains to be on guard as one of them opens the door, only to be stabbed by a kunai for the door to be basically exploded off. As they see a, pe a bunch of these weird knives flying at them with paper on the back. As the entire place begins to exp as these things begin to explode, causing the entire bu building to become begin to collapse. But Toby Rama isn't letting any of them survive this. 
or uh, more or less um, leave this unscathed. He's going to make sure that they all are basically taken care of. As Deku does this, Deku um, finishes the last person being the leader. He ties them all up with one big rope, grabs a hold of the rope before use um before then um walk um before then sealing them away within the scroll. As Deku would then walk to the nearest police station. As Deku would ask the police, um I would then ask say, um, hello officer, I'm here to turn in some villains. As the uh, officer will look at Deku saying, Are are you a pro hero? As Deku says no, but I managed to take them down. As the officer says, wait here, while I go get the detective while you, so you can ask you some questions. As Deku nods and with his scroll on the back, everyone's staring at him with the weird clothes that he's wearing. As if he, they think that maybe he's a cosplayer or something. As a, detec as a detective comes by and introduces himself as, I believe you, I gotta remember how you pronounce it actually, Naomasa Catchy, I believe. We're just gonna call him Detective Naomasa. As uh, he would then ask Suzuki to come to a room with him as they enter an interrogation room. As he says, Are you a cosplayer? Deku says, No. As he says, Then why are you wearing this red armor? As Deku says, Well, if you would rule by heroes, this is my hero suit. Well, it's and it's also all that I have to wear at the moment. So I, this is a hero suit that he would lie. See. Well, actually, in truth, I'm going to say think that Tobirama did build a suit for his armor itself. So he would say that this is a, his armor. Um, he built this himself as his hero costume for whenever he got into UA. As Naomasa would then ask what is his name, he would then say Izuku Midoriya. As Naomasa would then say the name sounds familiar. Hold up while I go and see why the name sounds familiar. As Naomasa would leave, only to be rushed back in the room five minutes later and say, where have you been the for 10 years. You and your parents disappeared. Where are they? As Deku says, my parents are dead. They died 10 years ago on my 7th birthday. You two villains attacked them now. So, I decided to leave and to use in my quirk, I teleported to a base of mine in another country where I've been, or another, on a completely new continent and in, in, in a new country than where we I was currently. While leaving, while leaving something there so I can get back to my parents' graves every once in a while. And I was finally done with my training. I came back today. I came back today and decided to take care of those villains. Not kill them, which I'm very well capable of doing. It probably will do in the future if I, when I become a hero. He would then open the scrolls. Now my sister says, what are you doing? As Deku says, the villains are in here. Where would you like me to place them? As Neymasa says, oh, hold up. As Neymasa would then um, um, ask for a guard to go and clear out a quirk nullifying cell quickly as they do this, or a cell, because we're going to state that all cells have quirk nullif nullifying technology so that they can at least subdue villains since most villains are quirk or have quirks. So. Yeah, Masa would then tell Deku to walk in here and to then un uh, and to put them in there. As Deku would then place his hand on the scroll before then holding up a half lamp cell. I believe that's what you would call it. And as, as the in a puff of smoke, all of the um all of the villains that Deku had basically captured are there as they're not even awake as Deku says they're gonna be unconscious for a while and some of them have a few broken bones. Neomasa says, hey kid, I'd like to talk to you myself. As Neomasa would then escort Deku to a um, to his uh, office, as he would then explain to Izuku that these villains are no are no normal villains. These are villains that have been escaping the police and pro heroes for years, for around approximately 15 years. Which means they were there, I believe that believe they could now accept the team, which means they, they were creative and they've been running from the cops for 12. For, uh, they've been running from the cops since Deku was two. As then Master says, we haven't been able to find their base. Do you know where it's at? As Deku says, well, I know where it was. As then Master says, what do you mean? As Deku says, I blew the entire place up. Then Master says, oh. Well, you captured them. So, I would like to offer you something. As Deku would ask, what is it? 
I would like to offer you a um, scholarship into UA. You won't have to take any exams, especially with me being me and the person that I know. I can get you into UA with no hassle. As Deku would not. As Deku says, it only gives me more time to train, which is the only reason I would accept. If I didn't have to train, then I would tell you that I'd take the entrance exams like any other person. Snail Monster would not say, so where are you going to live? You're only 17. You have to be 18 at least to live on your own. As Deku would say... I don't know. As Neil Masa says, hold on. I may have someone who might want to take you in. Especially seeing the skills you displayed. He might even help you ben might benefit it might it might benefit you to learn under him. As Neil Masa then gets on the phone as he calls the one person. As the man as a man shows up with black hair, he seems oddly tired. He says, Neil Masa, what is it that you need? As Nero Masa says, um, Aizawa, uh, Eraserhead, I would like to introduce you to Izuku Midoriya. I'm just going to give everyone a name, and the villain name, which is going to be the Akoski, obviously. He says, this is the kid that took down the Akoski. Then Aizawa will look at him, showing himself a burst of energy, which Deku finds pretty weak. He says, what? He says, yes, and he's currently 17 and is not in enrolled into any school and doesn't have anyone since both of his parents are dead. I would like to see if you would like to adopt him at least until he turns 18 to give him at least a place to stay. As um, Aizawa looks at Deku and then as you know what and then as hey kid um what is your quirk? As Deku, um, as Nemasa would activate his, um, his own quirk, as Deku would say, um, quirk of his head, actually. But I use an ancient entry, uh, ancient entry, yeah, I can't believe I said that. An ancient energy that was lost to this world thousands of years ago. As Izawa looks at Nemasa, as Nemasa confirms that he's telling the truth, as he says, can anyone use it? As Deku says, from what I can tell, only those who are quirkless can use it. As he, everybody with quirks has some in them. But it's limited due to their quirks. See, basically, this energy basically mutated and eventually began to mutate constantly until quirks were eventually created, and it began to limit itself, not to to its full capability. So while everything still works works like it would normally with this ability. Like the energy still works, it's basically a whole new energy at this point, which I have now dubbed Quirk Energy. As 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 I would not, and she says, "Well, then, come on, kid, I'll take you to my place." As Deku would not before the Master would just say, "Oh, Nazawa, he'll be getting a um, scholarship to UA." As the Master says, "Hmm, that that hasn't been done ever, actually." As Deku and Aizawa would uh, leave, only to go to Aizawa's house, and says, you have a pretty nice house for someone who seems overly tired. And Aizawa says, thanks, as he says, make yourself at home, and if you need an if you need anything, just let me know. Um, the train, I have a personal training ground in the backyard, I have a gym in that room right there, and the kitchen is that way. The room should be down the hall. As Deku would not, before then going into the placing it, um, decorating his room with the help of his shadow clones. As Deku, as Todorama, uh, I know I say Deku, but Todorama and Todorama sometimes, they're both the same person, so there's really no point in changing it. As Todorama begins to settle in, and to be, um, basically settle into the into his new surroundings, he begin um he begins to work on something. A quirk, no, since quirk energy, which is what he's going to call it, is a little bit different from chakra. He's going to create a new seal, which will allow him to basically seal away someone's quirk. Um, from here on, Deku will continue training all the way up until 
the um, advertising entrances in it a week after everyone who would, who participated in the practical um, in the recommended portions or well those who were recommended and who accepted obviously would be to- and those who guys the interest results would be told that UA will be doing is a will be implementing a dorm system this year for all their students that they since basically this is mainly state that the UA interest exams happens like the last on the last few days of school normally if you go to school it's like May and then after that you have a couple of months like three or four months you're gonna uh, sometimes it's three two and a half months before your school starts up again in this case it's going to be four months it will tell them that they will all be moving into your dorms um as soon as soon as possible which will mean during the summer they will be moving in into ua to get accustomed to everything as a zawa would then um tell izuku all right kids you have everything packed up as deku says all my things are always in here as Azawa sees that Deku is pointing to the gigantic tissue roll on his back, on his back, as he had never really asked Deku what that was exactly. As Deku would then tell Azawa, um, "How are we gonna get this? You know what? Is it, no, he says no. How about this? I'll race you to you." As Azawa, as Azawa says, and what what happens if I win? As Deku says. Um, since I'm going to be gone, and I know you're going to be pretty lazy, Azawa. I'm pretty lonely here, Azawa. Azawa says, actually, the teachers live in UA also. Really? Well, anyways, I'll get you... Hmm. I'll give you 10,000 pounds of gold. I don't know how much money that is, so I'm going to look that up. Um, well, apparently, that's... Two hundred and five million nine hundred thirty-five thousand and six hundred dollars in USD. That's a lot of gold. As I would, with eyes were wide in this, he would obviously do a quick math to figure this out. As I would says, "How do you have that much?" As Deku says, "Um, Zian, I went to a place from an ancient time, obviously, where I learned to use this energy. They left a lot of things behind, including gold." I mean, there's a lot of it. He has at least a good 300,000 pounds worth of gold in a highly secure spot. Definitely not, um, definitely not tattooed onto his back as a seal. That's definitely. He goes like, hey, yo, there's Shinobi. There's no way they have that much gold. I mean, think about it. There's Shinobi. There obviously will be gold, especially with gold. The um, especially with gold, basically. Um, everyone um coming from the um every single part of the world eventually housed had at least housed one nation. And since no one could really open seals anymore, there was no way for them to claim their gold. So basically, he just claimed it for himself. Which is a bit of a stretch, but still. I just want him to have the money, at least. I mean, the second Okage, he is the second Okage. He has to be paid very well. Anyways, moving on. As I would say, you're on. And if you win, as Deku says, if I win, I know exactly how you work, Aizawa. I want fuel, full fuel, I'll say fuel. I want full immunity from your expulsion thing. On the first day of school. Azawa says fine. As Azawa says ready. As Izuku says yeah. Go. As Azawa revs off on his. In his car. Or um, moves in his car. As Deku using a quick series of body flickers. Silently body flickers on top of Azawa's car. And uses chakra to stick to it. Without Azawa even know, knowing that he's up there. As before they arrive in UA, as I was thinking that he clearly wants it, he hasn't seen Deku. Deku would obviously body flicker off the car and appear in front of Aizawa. Well, at the um, at where at the um entrance of UA, as Aizawa was seeing this, would jaw would drop, saying, "I guess he gets out the car hurriedly and runs towards Deku, saying, how did you win?'" But Deku says, "Um, I basically kind of used a short a um." 
a high speed technique and kind of appear on the top of your car and use that energy to stick to the top of your car. And then I use the body flicker technique to get here. As I was saying, it's plain dirty. Fine. You're excluded from the expulsion, but you will be taking the test. Since you kind of cheated. I think he says, yeah, that's fair. As Deku had developed more of a brotherly bond with Aizawa over the past year of him being there. Or actually, no, I'm going to have it be past two years. Deku is currently 19, entering college. So, yes. <clears throat> now, Deku himself... Um, Deku would obviously enter UA and would follow Aizawa to Classroom A. As Deku would enter, as the entire students, since none of them have ever seen him, none of them seen them in the in, in him in the entrance exams, none of them seen him in the um, what is it called the practical exam, uh, the recommendation exams. They're all wondering who is that, who is he. As everyone's looking at him as Deku, then looking says, um. Hello, why are you all looking at me? As they all ask, um, who are you and why are you here? And Zeku says, I'm your classmate. And he says, but none of us seen you have seen you in the entrance in the entrance exams or in the as um no one will continue the or the recommendation exams. And Zeku says, well, I kind of got a scholarship in an um. A scholarship, which is somewhat, which is different from the recommendation, from the um, from one of the detectives that was actually very close to um, some of the staff in UA, for helping take down a group of villains that had basically escaped the police for fifteen years. As everyone's jaw was dropping, Vegas says, "So I don't have to. I didn't have to take the entrance exams or the recommendation exams." As a boy with blonde hair would walk in, as he somewhat recognizes this person, as he looks at him and says, as he begins seizing and aimed at him, Deku, what are you doing here? I thought you were dead. You should have stayed dead. As Deku would look up, as he said, oh, hello, Bakugo. And he, I'll be honest, it's not a pleasure to see you again. To be honest, I hate the fact that you're in my class, but I guess I'll go with it for now. He says, all right, class, sorry, everyone. You might as well sit down. But begin, um, sit down now. The teacher is outside the door. As And everyone looks at him confused. As I would then open the door to me. So you could sense me. Huh? You just had to ruin the fun. As they all see this caterpillar-like creature open the door. They all freaked out as a man then unzips the, the this caterpillar skin thing and walks out as the as the man that introduces himself, himself as Sota Aizawa um and that he's their homeroom teacher and that they'll be doing a quirk apprehension test he would then tell them to meet them outside put their gym uniforms on on as they all everyone does this that group all right, I forgot this is not the first day of school. I forgot to do the time skip. I'm not gonna lie. I legit thought I did time skip and legit just realized I didn't. Wow, so a lot of you guys may be confused on how we got here so fast. Like, yo, but where have been those four months of basically that? So, yeah. So, yeah, that's. I'm sorry, I forgot about that, actually, so, yeah. Actually, no, it's not going to be their first day. I can actually still play this off. I can have Aizawa gather his class, um, have, um, has sent, basically sent the message out, and basically have his entire class go into class themselves. So, yeah, I can still actually work with this, and this is still during the four months. As Aizawa then says, all right. Um, as everyone arrives, he says, all right, we're going to, I was going to say, explain, we're going to be doing a quick apprehension test. Someone asked about, what about the, um, what is it called? What is this thing called, um, orientation that, as I was saying, we don't have time for that. He says, his school looks different from any other school. Thing is, the fact being that the teachers can basically teach how they want to teach. 
still, yeah, no orientation. Zidane throws the ball at Midoriya saying, here, being the only scholar, scholarship student to ever be in UA, I want you to throw, what was your furthest throw with the softball? And Deku says, with or without you in my power. And she says, without. And Deku says, without. And this is just me maybe lowballing it. 300 meters. And Zagawa says, huh? Deku says, I trained my physical strength immensely. So, 300 meters. Just shot to everyone. That's probably like somebody with a very weakened version of a strength quirk that you get. Or maybe a child with a strength quirk. That's probably as far as they could get. And he could throw that far without using his quirk. Or that's what they all would think is a quirk. It's about to go into this. How did he get so powerful? Where's he been now all these years, first of all? When did he get a quirk? Was he hiding it from him this, same, this entire time? Somewhere along the same thoughts we would have in canon. As Bakugo, um, as Bakugo watches as Deku, as I was says, all right now, Midoriya, do your thing. As Deku then throw the ball, as everyone um, begins to throw the, um, get ready to throw the ball, as everyone sees a blue, um, energy begins to flow outside of Deku's hand. As Deku is using the chakra to strengthen his throw, to his throw, as he throws the ball as far as he can before, before everyone sees his hand in his weird hand motion, hand gesture, hand sign. And Deku then says, Water style, Water Dragon Jutsu. As he uses his chakra to pull, basically uses his refined control of water, of his water style. And, you know, as he, as Tokugama is known for, pulling water from the, um, moisture from the air. As he uses it to create a water dragon, which then carries the ball even further up until it begins to freeze. As the ball, as it explodes, sending the ball even further than normal. As as he reads it, as it then says, if infinite, as basically, even though the water probably um, would have frozen, it's still imbued with Deku's chakra, which was kind of heating the water up at the same time. So basically, it, it was still basically just water. And so it basically got, became resistant to the, um, to the coldness of going that high up in altitude. And as I says, you'll be doing a quirk apprehension test. As he begins to say that school test students on with on without using their quirks, the school is he views that as irrational. That 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 there needs to be a change. I don't really remember exactly how that went down. As everyone continues to do, um, starts with the ball throwing as the first test. They will continue on with the test with Deku getting first place in the um. I believe it was the 50 meter dash and push ups and sit ups. Deku will also get first place in the um, what is it? The um, grip strength test. Deku will break the machine with his grip, uh, with his grip, obviously, also using chakra to augment his strength. And then, and the side to side jump, he will basically <laughs> he will basically make a clone to make it seem like he's just moving so fast that he's um making he he made an after image, which is not true. He's just having a clone step side to side, which is I would have some suspicions of. Um, so, um, eventually the the um they would get to the other mat, a hundred meter dash, and then a long jump, and once doing these. As I would then reveal everyone's scores. As he then, re before um, everyone can look at them, he then says, Whoever gets last place is expelled and doesn't even get to attend the first day of UA. I'm doing this now because it gives you more time to look into other schools if you are expelled. As everyone looks at the boys, Mineta sees this. And it says, No. As Aizawa says, Sorry, Mineta. And then it begins to walk away. And he says, I lied about the expulsion. As Romo says, I thought you guys would have seen that coming. This is obviously a lie. As Deku says, actually not true. As I was last year, as I was expelled his entire, um, his entire class on the first day. Or the actual first day of school. For showing no potential. He deemed this entire class as at least having some potential. As the entire class is shocked by this. 
but they all get to know each other by, by going back to the doors and begin to get to know each other for the rest of those four months that they have off. Now, I'm currently going to go on a break before finishing recording the What If. It's already at 39 minutes, and I'm only in, I'm not even scratched the surface of the story. So, I'll try to get into more of it. So, I'll see you guys when I pick it back up. Alright, so we're getting, obviously, into a time skip to the first day at UA. And, um, basically, let's just get into it. Well, actually, there's really nothing interesting on the first day at UA, but they already did the quirk apprehension test. There was orientation during the summer for those first years who were just coming so that they wouldn't do it later on in the year. So, yeah, there's actually really nothing much to go over. So, instead of it doing that, we're going to time skip to the next day, actually. The second day of school. Now, everyone would have just gotten finished with President Mike's class when they were wondering who's going to be teaching the next class. When they didn't hear a voice say, I am here, coming through the door like a normal person. As All Might is now coming through the door. The door. The door. As, um... As he says, today we're going to be doing, I believe it was Hero, hero Basics training. A um, training exercise. As the entire class is very um, excited because he's getting to this battle train. As Rakugo gets excited, thinking that he can finally put Deku in his place. As All Might then says, well, <clears throat> before that, you will have to wear something. Because obviously they say, the clothes make the pros. As he presses a button on the door, as he says, Oh, and Yomi Doria, you never submitted a costume, and so we kind of made one of our own. As Deku says, no worries, I have my costume right here. As the other ones would wonder, like, yo, why does he always carry that, that big old tissue thing around him? As he says, and what is that? As Deku says, it's a scroll. They used to write in these and store things in these very, you know, very long time ago. It's almost, oh. Deku says, yeah. <clears throat> As um, everybody would go get dressed, Deku would obviously put on his armor, grab his sword, and make sure all of his weapons were ready. Since he technically fights Quirkless, I'm pretty sure he, it's alright if he has weapons. Sorry about that. Now, <clears throat> um, once everyone gets to the training field, All Might will begin to pull out a note card before then explaining that today will be a heroes versus villain training exercise where the villains will be protecting a nuclear bomb, so on and so forth. The heroes will try to grab that bomb, so on and so forth. And Deku begins to wonder, is All Might really even suited to become a teacher? He just skipped over a bunch of information. Zomai then gets to the point un and tells everyone that they will be choosing their partners through lots. Everyone's extremely happy, wondering who their partner is. As Ida brings up, wouldn't it be more rational to basically have everyone choose their partners? Zeku explains that he never knows who exactly he's going to work with out in the field, so it's best to mix it up as much as possible rather than working constantly working with the same person. As Ida understands, so. Him and De um, um, so Deku and everyone would choose their lots with Deku actually being put on a team with, um, it's going to be, no, not Aura. I don't know if I want it to be Oraka. Hmm, let me think on this. Ah, I've decided on who it's going to be. It is, it is going to be Jiro. As Jiro will be, um, based on the team of Deku, she will walk up to him. As the other team of Deku will be going against will be Todoroki and Bakugo. Now, obviously, Todoroki and Bakugo will head out, but Todoroki is telling Bakugo not to get in his way, but he will defeat them in one fell swoop. As Bakugo says, don't you dare. Deku was mine and mine alone. As Deku, his basic, um, Deku and Zero walk towards the building, as All Might then tells them they have five minutes to come up with a plan. So after spending the next five minutes planning, him and Jiro, her and Jiro, um, Deku and Jiro have a plan. 
I got my with the fix. Start as you have been outside the studio will plug her earphone jacks into the wall and will listen through the walls of where they are at. And she will tell Deku that they're on the third floor in the second room on the left. As Deku would not at this, as she then tells Zero to grab on. As Zero said, huh? As Deku grabs Zero, before then body flick her into the top of the roof, where he sees there's a roof access point up there. As Deku says, hmm. I'm glad I used my six sensing technique also. As Jiro says, what? And Deku says, oh. Um, basically, I spread my energy throughout a certain place, and then I, I or sometimes I, I place my finger, my fingers on the floor, and kind of sense where people are or where things are at. And I can tell how far they are and how many there are. So he said, my and Deku would say it was only to include things in the corner, but I feel, I feel like some sometimes my sensing technique may not be as accurate as yours, as he's obviously lying. To, due to the fact that he doesn't want to hurt Jiro's feelings. So, Deku would then um, open the door as he then tells Jiro, uh, puts his hands to be quiet as him and Jiro begin sneaking around. As Deku then passes, um, goes down to the third floor, Kasi, he hears Kasi say, Where are you, Deku? As Katsuki is now just going through room to room by floor to floor. And from what Deku can sense, they have at least a minute before he gets here. As Deku would then say, we have a minute before he gets here. As Deku then tells Jiro to go on the first go on the first room and put it on the wall. And he'll go on the third room and put it on the wall to blow the wall apart up. He says, how is this going to blow the wall up? And Deku says, trust me, back as far away as possible. With Jiro nod as they would enact their plan, as Jiro would then signal to Deku that the plan is enacted, act, um, that the things have been planted, as Deku then holds up a sign, activating the paper bars as they explode the walls, as Bakugo hearing them, begins to head up toward Todoroki, as Todoroki says, Bakugo, you ruined your chance, before then, tapping his foot on the floor, as ice begins to spread out around almost everywhere, on the floor at least. As Deku sees this, he jumps up to the roof as Todoroki then runs towards a pillar before placing his hand on top of it. As he, as he begins to uh, basically freeze the entire building, capturing Zero and Bakugo with it, as they are un both unable to move. As All Might would then signal, uh, say that Bak Bakugo and Zero are now unable to uh, proceed. As he's running, why wasn't Deku? As he then sees Deku is on the floor again. As he sees Deku is walking towards him, not even slipping on the ice. As Todoroki sends some ice spikes at Deku, only for Deku to dodge and then throw a kunai at Todoroki. To which Todoroki will dodge, but he didn't know that this was part of Deku's plan. As the kunai whizzed past the nuclear bomb, as Deku then t uses a t his fly rising jutsu before then appearing right by the bomb touching it as every as all my would then declare the hero team win so after this every, they would all head back so the rookie would unfreeze the building and everything but congratulate Midori on winning and they will all go on to then head off back to the base or the, the um what is it the viewing area of sorts can't really use that training room, viewing area, base, whatever. As All Might then asks who's the MVP, as everyone clearly points out Midoriya. He says his plan to distract, um, he had a plan that basically um, allowed them to find out where exactly the um, building was. He wanted to include his partner as much as possible. And he then fought and used a um, comic. He used a, um, a one of his teleporting abilities to teleport to the to that knife that he threw that Todoroki had dodged, which I'm guessing he expected to. This is a total. Um, this seems that Deku had planned ahead. Uh, all my would not say. Wow, she said more than what I expected. What I was gonna say. As they all continue off the exercise, as we are time skip to the end of it. Now, once we get to the end of the. Of the 
um, they as I would then come to class, before then telling them that th that he had basically went over everyone's footage and would say, "Hey, Doya, good planning, and good job, including your um, uh, including your partner Todoroki. I recommend you use your left side. If not, I would deem you as p having no potential, and will kick you out of the way." I know what it tell it tells to you, so just, just try to use it over time, and I'm not gonna make you forcefully rush you into it. So Roki went on. He says, "Bakugo, control your anger issues. You have a lot of them." And before they're moving on, as he would then say, "Tomorrow, class will be taking your field trip to the USJ. <clears throat> um, you will wear. You could either wear your gym uniforms or your hero uniforms, but be ready." As the next day would come as they all arrive at the USJ. As all of them are be are in mo most actually all of them are in their UA uniform um in their um hero uniform, hero costumes. Their suits at least. As Deku then um and everyone walks in as they then are met by thirteen. As those thirteen begins to give the same speech. Obviously I don't I can't really remember it word for word. But they so he goes something something dangerous perk, something something killing people, something like that. Then he goes on. I'm not gonna lie, I'm extremely tired. I just woke up, I'm not gonna lie, I don't record it. So yeah. To i I'm trying to give you guys seven days of movie which means today this will be the movie tomorrow most likely be a Hawkeye movie maybe a different movie I'm not sure but yeah <clears throat> now moving on everybody would then be waiting um with um then into the UHJ which um 13 had in, um, informed them was called the unforeseen simulation drill as Kirishima would walk in Kirishima will point out that there are the not fake villains as Deku would then place his hands on his on his fingers before then sensing them. He senses a certain amount of malicious intent coming from them. As Deku says, those are real villains. As him and Aizawa then shut down, as Aizawa says, go back with the others. As Deku says, as he views the face all of them, no thanks. You're going to need as much help as possible. As Aizawa and Deku then get in mind, he says, before then taking on all of the villains. As Kirigiri eventually goes to the student that wants them away, and without Deku, Mineta and Sue are still on the boat, especially since he doesn't have one for all. And as I would then say, problem child, go help Mineta and Sue, they seem to be stuck. As Deku then says, fine. As Deku then, um, then begins to run away, Shigaraki says, no you don't, no one will kill him. As no, the Nomu tries to hit Deku, only for when he hits Deku, for there to be a poof of smoke, only to reveal a log. As Deku, they then see as Deku's running on top of water. As I was thinking, definitely not gonna lie, that's pretty cool. But as I was continuing fighting the villains, as, um, the Nomu's constantly chasing Deku as they're having a battle on water. But Nomu seemingly can't stand on water. So, um, it is constantly jumping up out of the water and punching Deku, which means that some of his blows are a little bit weaker than what they're supposed to. I'm even going to be bumping. I don't know how hard Hashirama hits, but we, I don't know if Hashirama can punch hard enough for him to change the weather like Bulma. Like, I'm not saying I doubt. We use the God of Shinobi for a reason. So, yeah, there has to be a reason for that. <clears throat> now, obviously, Deku would then say, Water prison jutsu. Before the water above the Nomu would then begin to imprison them. As the Nomu notices the water is becoming hard, is like hard, as is if he was going to be trying to punch through a steel wall. And the Nomu gets a hand out, only for his hand to be then be sliced off by Deku using a water style severing wave. As Deku then says, hmm. As Deku then says, uh, um, then puts his hand on the water for then sensing out Todoroki. As Deku then yells out, Todoroki! 
Heads up. As he then performs a jutsu being the water dragon jutsu, causing the water dragon to engulf the, the little water prison and to take it over to Todoroki, only for Todoroki to freeze it completely. As a Nomu, as when it hits the ground, the Nomu will then fall to pieces, being broken by the use um, by the ice, by it being basically being frozen and camped in ice, kind of like cartoon. How they do with a cartoon, like. You, you freeze someone in ice, and they completely frozen, and then you break it, and they're broken. Kind of like that. As Deku, um, would then insist that the Nomu was still alive. As Nomu would then, as Deku would then insist, Todoroki, get everyone out of there. And Todoroki would then put up an ice wall around it, surrounding his um, team, so that they can at least escape. So, once the number um, fully regenerates, he begins running towards Deku at such a high speed, but Deku is obviously able to keep up with this. The number was quite slow to Deku. As Deku then says, mm, Damn it, you get on my nerves. Before then bringing out a kunai with a paper bomb in it. As Deku would then stab the Nomu through the brain, as he would then say, No brain function, no quirk. As he then explodes the entire brain, severing it from the spine, leaving literally nothing for it to regenerate from. As the Nomu falls to the ground, obviously dead, as Deku continues on, as he sees um, the villains are calling up the ship. As Deku says, I believe it was Water Drilling Fang Bull, or Water Fang Bull, or one of those. As all the boys then begin to pierce into the villains, honestly dropping them down into the, um, Ocean Lake is really just lake water or just normal waters. Yeah. As they all fall down. As uh, as um, Deku then lands on the ship and tells Mineta and Sue to grab on. Before the two grab on to him, as Deku then disappears in a body flicker. As he says, um, as he says, now go join the rest. As he then sees that Ch Ch Shigaraki. The hand man is throwing a fit as they hear what he's saying. You are going down today. As she go, as Kirigi is singing this, we say, Tamira, it's time to leave. He says, No. As he begins to run towards Deku. As before to, um, before he could touch Deku, Deku would touch Shigaraki. He would then say, I got you now. As he placed the seal on Shigaraki, Shigaraki touches Deku only for his quirk to not work. As he sees a razor head, but the razor head is not even looking at him. As he looks at Deku and says, what did you do? Deku says, I sealed away your quirk, and I'm the only one able to break that seal. Uh, you stupid. As Shigaraki, before he could finish that, is walked away by Kirigiri. As All Might eventually joins everyone, saying, I am here. As he has an angry vis uh, angry face, because he's very, you can tell by his face, but he's very angry. But is extremely confused when he sees that most of the villains are defeated. As Deku would then say, you're kind of late, All Might. As All Might says, oh, I am very sorry about that. As All Might would then um, help the rest of the students, seeing as how he didn't expel much more energy. And he still has one for all. And kind of makes it a lot better. He's kind of a lot better with using it. And he, um, his time isn't slowly draining from him. So he didn't really use so much so he can actually stay in his bus form for a little bit longer. As the police eventually arrive and question everyone and getting their answers, they can all leave. As once they done, as I would then tell them that they're going to be going on break for, for a week. And to train as much as possible during that week. As they will all head to their dorms. And would begin a week's worth of training, but Deku training as much as he possibly can. As we're going to get into the first day of the week, as I would then um, come back to class, tell the art class, I have some somewhat bad news. As everyone's running blank to be, your fight is not yet over. As everyone's wondering, yo, yo, like, bro, what is he talking about? As he says, the sports festival. Is then what calms down, well, since Tokugawa is always, really almost always calm. 
as I was as before that I would like you guys to pick a class a class president. As you then uh, as I as that could actually be the one to to vote to implement the voting thing where they vote for who they want as class president. So obviously with the votes tallying up, they will place Deku as number one. I mean Deku total pro total Rama is literally a former Hokage. He should know how to lead a bunch of kids. And they continue on as I was says now on top of that one week that you have off, you also have another two weeks. So that's three weeks worth of training that you should have done for the sports festival. Good luck. But you'll be attending the rest of your classes today. So after the rest of your classes, everyone would um, disappear. As Tobirama would then go on the UA's grounds with the permission of Nezu to go train someone more secluded. As he begins training even more. Finding more scrolls from other countries, as the country that he's currently in is part is actually one of the um is actually one of the main villages for where Kiri is, Japan. I mean, have they they be based in Japan rather than something else? So the land of water is obviously going to be in, uh, surrounded. They're off. He's basically in the land of water. Is what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> and everyone then continues on. As Deku begins training other water Kyushu's from the um, Hidden Mist Village that are left behind, along with taking their seven swords, which seem to have been sealed away within the scroll. As Deku would uh, finally be done training two weeks later, as he would come back to UA, as today is the day the sports festival starts. Now, um... Let's get into the start of the sports festival. Um, so, yeah. Alright, let's just get into that. Now, everybody will be preparing for the sports festival, obviously. And it will be the day of it. So, everyone will come back to classes. And I will then tell them all to put on their their, uni um, their gym uniforms. He will then tell me, Doris to put on his hero costume if he wants to. As Deku nods, because Deku is technically quirkless, so they're not, and his hero costume obviously doesn't really, how do I say this, give him an advantage of really everyone. It's basically just a armor, it kind of does protect him, but it's chakra armor. So it's it's an armor, an old samurai armor. So to be honest, I'm pretty sure anybody could probably break it nowadays. So, yeah. Anyway, that's besides the point. He also has his kunai and sword. Since part of his um, his power is using his kunai, some of it is using his swords and things like that. So, they allowed him to use that, basically. So, everyone would be prepared and would all walk out. As Midnight would then call... I don't uh, know. Midnight would then be introduced as the sort of a proctor of the entire sports festival. Or, I believe what it's called, the host of the sports festival? I'm not sure. She would then um, call up for the student representative of um, the uh, first year's student representative. And this one is still, it's actually going to be, yeah, it's still going to be Bakugo actually. I was a little confused on whether I wanted to do Deku or Bakugo, but I'd rather do Bakugo than Deku. Because I really, really know what to exactly say. So, obviously that goes much the same. And everyone begins to wait for whatever the first round is. And when they are shown it, they are shown that it is an obstacle course. So obviously after an obstacle, um, after um, they find this out, they all line up. <clears throat> As Deku is, um, Deku's in the very back. As, as as everyone is wondering, you know, yo, why is he in the very back? And he's far back from everyone. As they all say start, as Deku begins to take off. As everyone sees Deku press his speed, as he's already passed everyone else. He's pretty fast for a person who, uh, for, for whatever the teachers um, know, that he's quirkless. So Deku would then begin running when he would come across the uh, robots from the entrance exam. Deku says this is what they have to fight. 
As he then runs past the robot before then saying, Water style, water whip. As he makes it, I think he actually, um, actually, no, no, not water whip. I know exactly what to do. Not water whip, water style hit and miss jutsu. So, or using the hit and miss jutsu, so he would obviously create a mist over himself, or hiding himself from the zero pointers who can no longer see him. So they won't attack him. And he comes from the opposite side of the mist, obviously coming out unscathed. And when it comes to the fall, he basically just body flicker over to each rock until he comes to it. And once passing the minefield, Deku would basically use his sensing technique to sense out where all the mines are and basically just run. We basically constantly run, uh, we memorize it and then run in that path at a very fast pace, eventually coming in first place. With everyone is now on, with everyone else being now on, just starting the, uh, or which the very front runners besides him being Todoroki and Bakugo have now just started the fall. Deku had already come in first place. So much of the rankings would go much normally than what they did in canon, with Deku coming in first place, Todoroki in second, but going third, so fourth, and so on and so forth. So they would then be um, be sent to another battle, a capture the flag battle. So <clears throat> this was really test Todoroki's skills to protect, protect something. So men, I would say that they should be in teams of fours. Well, it is forty-two students. Teams of four be working actually. Let me see. So apparently there's 10.5, so we're going to have one, obviously one person would have um, a team of four and another maybe a team of five. Or we could just do 40 students actually. So we're going to have 40 students playing, so we want to take out the last two places. And basically they're going to be going. So they would be team, um, so the bunch of teams would be more like canon, except for Deku, he's going to have one singular chain. So instead of Tokuyami, it would instead be um, who, who could replace Tokuyami? Not Ida, most definitely not Ida, not Todoroki or Bakugo. Hmm. Let me see. Let me think about it. I'm gonna switch Tokuyami with Kendo. So obviously they would be protecting their bases. Deku would then say, hmm. I'm going to go out and capture as many flags as possible. As he throws the kunai down in the on the floor before then putting his hands, his fingers in a cross suit as he says Shadow Clone Jutsu. Or actually mostly Shadow Clone Jutsu as ten clones fill the area surrounding the flag on all available places. As the clones then go through his so he'll say water style, water encampment wall. Before a water wall, basically a four like a literal almost a full house of wall. Basically just four walls that are connected was around the flag and everyone will you know be amazed at what Deku's doing as Deku begins going around taking the flags of most teams including getting in battles with other teams there's 10 teams so there's obviously going to be four teams that'll pass so six of those teams would have their their flags taken by Deku but Bakugo would be bold and would try to take a flag from Deku only for him to be immediately knocked out as Deku had no no um, need for Bakugo to ruin, to just get tried to at least injure um to injure him to injure Deku. He didn't have he didn't want Bakugo to basically try to injure him for him to eventually fail and he have to put Bakugo in the hospital because there might be collateral damage or something like that. So he basically just took Bakugo out. And Bakugo could be literal collateral damage if his if his blast was powerful enough, just like with the um in the cannon. When Bakugo used his gauntlet in the um, battle training, he really could have caught, he caused a lot of collateral damage. Which is quite stupid. Well, pretty much. <clears throat> As Deku would then, <clears throat> would then really send, um, before then, um, actually touching Bakugo. As he then um, uses his hand on the ground before spreading a seal. Um, before spreading a seal back towards Bakugo's base. As he then, t as Bakugo, everyone sees this Bakugo basically, it seemed like as if Bakugo was pushed, but instead he was teleported back towards his base where his, uh, where his team was being protect Bakugo. As Todoroki tries to make a uh, uh, run for it with the, um, by freezing water and camping wall, only for Deku's, only for coding a chakra to basically overpower his ice. 
the water target is really legit overpowering his ice. And that should not really be possible because you need no ice and water and wind combined. Ice is stronger than water in some cases. But Deku's water, Deku's water wall is legit not just mobile. It's constantly rotating at a certain speed. So Tobirama, not Tobirama, so, um... Shoto Todoroki's eyes is current constantly uh, being destroyed as every time he tries to cover the wall. So, <clears throat> so eventually it would end off with everyone basically with that group basically being coming in first place with all the other teams in normal with Shinzo winning Shinzo teams coming, and then fourth place, then his Bakugo teams, Todoroki's team, and then Deku's team in first place. So that would not change, uh, but after, but before they were all, like, they would um, learn about the the final, um, the final stage of the or the final event of the sports festival. They would all basically be, um, um, actually no, not they were all. I believe it was Ojiro and the fat kid who both give up, saying that they don't even remember what happened for most of the cavalry battle. Well, for actually from until the end, actually. So they would like to give up, saying this that how they didn't earn their spot in the cavalry in the uh, finals. So they would obviously the final event. So they would obviously give up, and both Ibari and Tetsu Tetsu would take their place, much like Cannon would. They can't come out as he would. So yes, that would happen still. So the final battle will be different. Instead of it being a one on one, it will be a triple threat match. It will be three versus. It will be one v one v one. I think would that make sense? Or one v actually no, a one v one v one v one. So it's four people all fighting out, and fighting to find out who will be the last winner, who will be the winner. So the first match will go as as stated: Deku versus Senso versus Baku, um, not versus Shoto versus Zero. The, the who's on Bakugo's side? It was Ochako, Bakugo. I believe the. Um, oh, what about Ida? I mean, there should be a total of sixteen. So there's oh, there's four of the teams. That's right. There's four of the matches. I'm not really gonna go with the other. So all the matches that always happen in the first round. So go by one to four, and then five to eight. Wait, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, five to eight, then nine to twelve, then twelve, and then thirteen to sixteen. Yeah, that's how it all is grouped out. So those are all the matches. And then we have a semifinal, which is actually going to be changing to a 1v1, um, to a, not a 1v4 battle, but a 1v1 battle. And then in the final battle, it'll be obviously another 1v1. <clears throat> actually, it's a 2v2 battle. No, yeah, yeah, that would make sense. A 2v2 battle, then a 1v1 battle. So, um, that's how I'm going to have it go. I don't know what exactly that would be called. If there's a name for it, tell me down in the, in the comments. But yes. So, everyone would obviously be prepared for the sports fe um, for the uh, final um, event of the sports festival. As everyone, like Shoto, Deku, Roto Rama, Shinzo, and Sarah will all get ready. As they all decide to come up with a plan, get Deku out first. He seems to be the most dangerous of them all. So, they would do so. <clears throat> so, constantly they will be taking on Deku. And, um, they would constantly, um, when the master starts, they will all send out attacks towards Deku. With Senso basically getting up close. Trying to at least do with what little hand-to-hand -hand combat he has to overpower Deku. Only for him to be immediately eliminated by Deku. For his swift knockout. And when it comes to Todoroki, Deku would see that uh, water attacks might not work. So Deku begins to go to the hands as he says, Fire style, fireball jutsu. As we do know, Toby Roman does have an affinity for all, well, can use all five elements. Which is a uh, fire, lightning, wind, water, and earth. <clears throat> so, Deku then, um, Toby, um, not Toby Roman. Todoroki would then be shocked to see Deku can use fire. As Deku would then say, Earth style, Mud Dragon, um, uh, what was it, Mud Dragon Bullet, or what was, was that the name of the Jutsu? The Jutsu that he was in use against the Rule Tomorrow, or if you play Shinobi Striker, it was the Jutsu that is one of Hiryu's signature moves, 
one of the two jutsus that you get from Shinobi Striker. Obviously, that jutsu. So, <clears throat> so everyone would be con uh would be against Deku and Todoroki, and would um or not not Deku and Todoroki. Uh, with Sero, um, seeing this, Sero will try to get an attack for Deku, only for Deku to cut his tape by coating his blade and chakra. As he then throws it at, he quotes it then in wind and lightning chakra and then throws it at Sero. As Sero catches it, as Deku threw it slow enough for him to catch it, only to be shocked by it, Sero, when Sero's arm begins to go limp. As Deku then appears above Sero, Sero then looks at the, at the knife that he caught to see weird markings on it. And this is when Deku appears above him. As Deku would then say, Gwen style. Great breach. Uh, or, um, was it? Um, Gwen style, I believe, great breakthrough jutsu or Gwen breakthrough. Let me make sure I'm saying this right. Okay, we're just gonna go with Gwen style great breakthrough, which is the original version. Um, which is, uh, I believe, what, is what I was supposed to say. So, he also shoots a bunch of air. As Deku then sends, uh, sent, this air hits Zero, sending him out of bounds. As it's now only Todoroki versus Deku. As De as Tubby Rama raises um uses the ninja, he's not going to let Tubi he's not going to let Todoroki use his flames. Not against him. He's not taking the chance of Todoroki getting even more powerful, even though he still wouldn't stand a chance against him in his in his own opinion. As Deku then sends water style. Um. What was this called? Okay, so I had to make sure that I was thinking of the right jutsu and what the name was properly. I was going to say Water Sinmon Jutsu, but it's actually called Heavenly Weeping, which is where, uh, you know, where they condense the water chakra into Sinmon. So, obviously, he would shoot out the Sinmon and would pierce all over Todoroki. With him being very precise with this, of course, improving himself for all those years, he was very precise in where he hit Todoroki, hitting Todoroki in his pressure points. Causing Todoroki to fall to the ground unconscious. As some of the ones that hit on his other side, on his right, what side of his is cold? I believe it's either his uh, his right side. It, um, was it both? Yeah, my his right side. I had to make sure I knew my right from left. Actually, his right side would have frozen some of them, but they still would have pierced him barely. But they wouldn't have touched the pressure points. But the ones on his left side, yeah, he since he doesn't like using his fire side. He does what he hit and hit his first place. He still would have been knocked unconscious. So obviously the winner of that of this match will be Deku. As we go into the next match, and I believe I'm just going to I believe it was um, um Denki versus Ibarra, and then Ochako versus Katsuki, if I'm not mistaken. No, it wasn't Ochako versus Katsuki. Who was Tenya? I think was it May that Tenya was going against? I think it was. So all of them would obviously be going against each other, and honestly, in this match, who do I want to win? I'm, better yet, I'm gonna pull it out with Tenya going in with the win, coming out with the win, rather than anyone else, so that um, we can have a, a like a basically a battle of speed versus Bakugo and who else? Was Bakugo? Tokoyami maybe. So yeah, Tokoyami and Bakugo, and Deku and Tenya will be the next. We'll be moving on to the next round. So, we would then get into the 2v2 battles. So, obviously, Deku and Tokoyami would then have, to, um, Deku and Ida would have to come up with a strategy. As Deku would then tell Ida that he's going to create a small screen, and he's going to guide him into wherever he needs to go. As Ida would not, as Deku would then, as the match would start, as Deku would then say, Hit and miss Jutsu. As he would then tell Ida, um, ten. I don't. I'm not really good at this. I mean, ten o'clock or something like that. As Ida would then deliver a high-powered kick to this person, being Tokoyami. As even though Tokoyami thrives in the darkness, since he's kind of creates somewhat of a darkness, it still the sun is out, so it's a little bit weaker. So and plus he wouldn't be able to react to something he can't see coming. And either would Bakugo as Deku delivers a knee strike to Bakugo's gut, knocking the wind out of Bakugo before then saying. Sorry about this, Bakugo. But, you know, it was never, never really anything personal. Bringer of bringer of darkness. As uh, 
everyone sees as a mist and begins to disperse as they are all encompassed in basically basic darkness, including Ida. As Deku would then tell Ida not to worry, that he he won't attack him because he's thinking he's gonna take on Bakugo and um, Tokiyami. And since this is a Genjutsu, it doesn't really do, really actually give true darkness, so Tokiyomi's quirk won't be stronger. This is a Genjutsu. So Deku would easily take out um, Tokoyami in this, and would then move on to Bakugo, only taking him out by using an explosive tag that he placed on Bakugo, who is extremely sweaty before canceling the technique and activating the um, the paper um, the paper bomb and exploding it, sending Bakugo flying. Bakugo would eventually be eliminated, with Deku and Ida moving on to face each other in the finals. Now this is a little unorthodox, but I like it this way. It kind of seems like a good way to go about it, doing this, the sports festival. So, moving on, everyone would then go on to um, go on a break before getting ready for the finals. As Ida would then tell Midoriya, we'll walk up to Deku and would then say, Good luck, Midoriya. I wish you the best. As Deku says, You're going to need the luck a lot more than I am. As Ida says, I have never. Damn. Anyways, that's beside the point. Um, Deku would then move on. Um, Deku and Ido would then shake their hands with each other, showing at least a little bit amount of sportsmanship. As they then hear two voices say, "That's so manly." So man. As every eventually the lunch is over and everyone continues for the fight, um, the break is over and everyone goes for the final match, Deku versus Ida. As I Deku would say, for you, Ida, I'll only use hand-to-hand -hand combat. Or, yeah, actually, you know what? No. Or maybe. Maybe so. Hmm. You know what? I'll, I'll use hand-to-hand -hand combat for you, Ida. As Ida says, I thank you. As Deku then begins to take off his armor. And he says, I didn't really need it. And then no one could really land a blow on me. As he takes off all of his armor, puts down his sword, his kunai pouch, everything. Really keeping his hidden, his little forehead thing that he has. I don't know what that is called, actually. That, the thing that Yamato wears and he wears. That. As Ida would say. As the match would start, as Ida would try to deliver a kick, a couple um and with um his engines being used, obviously coupled with his quirk, only for Deku to block the kick before delivering a quick punch to Ida's face, sending him um back a little. As Ida stops skating before then saying, "I wanted to keep this move a secret, maybe for a little bit longer." As he would then say, "Reciprocal burst." As Ida. Is then hit with the um. Is then um no Ida then uh, at a high speed tries to kick Deku, only for Deku to catch his leg and spin, throwing Ida away and using all that momentum as Ida is skidding back almost to the outskirts of the arena. As Deku says this arena is too small, as he then says Midnight expand the arena. Me and him are going to need as much room as we can. As Minai looks at Cementos and then looks at Ido, he nods, and she then nods before the entire floor of the arena is encompassed in a ring. So they now have the entire floor. As Minai is now in the stands watching this match. As everyone sees as the impressive hand to hand combat of Deku, Deku is basically just. It looks like Deku is literally not trying while fighting Ida. As Ida is trying to place a bunch of well placed kicks, only for Deku to constantly block them. As Deku says, sorry Ida, but this has to end now. As Deku then disappears in pure speed, appearing behind Ida before kicking him in the face. As he then kicks him up in the air, before then powering himself, his hand with a, 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 a lot of chakra, actually, with a lot of, what do I want? Earth chakra to make it a lot denser and stronger in the attack. As he delivers a punch to Ida's gut, sending him flying into the ground. As when Ida hits the ground, it kind of bounces up as if it was a trampoline. As Deku would then send Earth Chakra to his leg as he delivers a final leg drop on Ida's gut. 
which would incapacitate Io, giving him the win and knock him unconscious actually. So give it they will give him the win. The deck will be the winner of the sports festival. So with this, it will be ending off the whole sports festival thing. And you guys may be wondering, yo, what about Stain? Why didn't Ida go there instead of fighting the winner? There's a reason for that. So obviously they, this obviously was because Ida left, I think do, maybe during the finals. Or um I think so I think Ida left during the finals, so with this one, he since he's participating in the finals, he would actually, um, and his mother is seeing this, he wouldn't call him until after the finals was over, which means Ida wouldn't be there for the award ceremony, but he would still get second place, with Bakugo and Tokoyami um, both getting third place. <clears throat> so, everyone else would um, congratulate Deku as they would all move on. And a week later, they would all come back to class as Aizawa then says, Hello, class. Welcome back. I hope you've enjoyed your little break. As everyone says, Aizawa Sensei, you had a likely work on from the campus since the entire time you've been in the dorms. So, Aizawa Sensei is right. You know, I kind of forgot that. As Aizawa would then tell them that they're going to be choosing their hero names, but he's not going to help them seeing as how he's not good with this. He says, but she is. As a person walks in the door, obviously being Midnight. As Midnight would then tell them that um, they're going to be, um, they're, she's going to be, they're going to be choosing their hero names, and she's going to give them either a green light or a red light on their names. On whether the names are good or not. As Aizawa would explain that these names will well be their um, positive hero names, and sometimes they might even be their permanent hero names. I believe they call Tobarama the creator. Um, yeah, I think that was one of his titles. So, um, then he does, it says his name is Izuku Midoriya. He's obviously not gonna, he's gonna choose his own name. So, when it comes to Deku, Deku would then go walk up as he then says, I'm the, um, what, what would be the good name for Tobarama as a hero? So instead, I just decided to go with maybe the Water Hero Dragon or Water Hero Tobirama. It's one of those. It'll be so. I'll choose eventually at the end of the story which one it'll be permanently. So yeah. <clears throat> now, once everyone do that, they will all hand out their. Uh, uh, as I, once they all pick their names, as I will come back. <laughs> And we'll then tell them who all the internships with Midoriya getting, obviously getting the top number one. But Deku will then tell the, uh, Aizawa that he doesn't want to do any internships. So Aizawa will then say, you know that this is a part of your grade. As Deku says, yeah, but I don't, none of these people can help him improve in any way. He could, pr if he trains long enough, he could um, definitely use fire better than um, he could probably make fire hotter and stronger than endeavors. He, he has better hand to hand combat than Miriko. 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 <laughs> He's better when it comes to being a ninja of sorts than Ed Shot. And All Might can't even beat him in a one on one spar. So he says he'd rather sit this one out. As, but he then looks over to see one name, actually. Nezu. He says, I, you know what? It's all, never mind. I found one. Is that is Deku would then cut the name out before sticking it on the board for everyone to see. As they all go see, to see that it says Nezu. As I was like, no. Oh, absolutely not, Midoriya. As he sees that Deku would already gone, he says, no. Not another one. I can't deal with two of them. As... Once they're done, um, once everyone else is done, Deku's with um, Nezu will stay with them while everyone else goes to their um, internship. As basically throughout um, Deku's internship with Nezu, he would basically just be improving upon his intellect, coming up with more creative ways of doing things, that more better, better battle strategies, and he's also including helping Nezu create better battle strategies, some that he used once as Tobirama. So more or less, Deku in the um, is no is not included in the stain arc. I would normally well have someone replace him. Like if maybe if he had a twin, I would do that. Like I did do that in one of my what ifs, uh, which was Shazam. But in this one, no, we won't be doing that. Oh, by the way, I did finish the Shazam series. If you guys are wondering, 
I just not liking the way it ended. So I'm not sure if I want to post the movie or not. Oh, and I finished the Sasuke series that's also finished. I still, again, don't like how it ended, so I'm not sure if I'll post the movie or not. But that's besides the point. Now, now that everybody else has um, gotten done with the internships, um, actually, what I'm trying to get to after the internships were done, the whole host incident happened. Ida wasn't necessarily killed, but he was gravely injured in this. And he's going to take some time off. And once everyone comes back, they will be able to take their finals. As I will be now drawing upon the final of the two two of the final arcs for the um of the story of my story at least, would be the summer camp thing, the the finals, the summer camp, and then next is the provisional licenses and then work studies. We all know what happens to people who take those work studies. <clears throat> so, um, what do I want to do next? Let's see. Ah, I got it. Now, once everyone comes back from their finals, um, and Tim is fully healed, Aizawa would then let everyone know about them. Um, that they're going to be taking their finals. From uh, once they're done with their works, um, their internships, they will be come back and they will take their finals and we tell them that they have like up to a week or two they have up a week to study for it and mama would obviously offer with her getting second with Deku obviously being the one in number one when it comes to midterms and I'll rank number one when it comes to the test so Deku would obviously um offer some but many people would you um, would think of Deku as probably too strict as Deku got a perfect score on it no, no, not only that, he also just interned with Nezu, and they don't want to know what that's like. What happens when somebody comes back from an internship with Nezu? So once all of this is happening, Izawa then said, "Me, um, no." Izawa then said, "Now go. We have a lot of things to work on." And then one will go study for the final. As they all wonder what's going to be the practical portion. As Deku says, now I'm thinking about it, said we might be fighting the teachers. You see, because last year they had the students fight the robot, the entrance exam robot. But, um, so you can tell that last year, obviously someone here knows someone here. They might most likely going to change it in hopes of keeping it new or fresh. So the students don't have time to prepare personally for it. They would say, you know, they kind of make sense of, uh, in in a way, as they all begin to prepare to fight the teachers, uh, or some of the teachers. They don't really know if they're fighting all the teachers, but they know they're fighting some of the teachers. As Deku begins training, as um. As Deku would um, finish uh, training himself, obviously, along with helping everyone study for the um, written portion of the finals, we will then skip to the final exam day. And once everyone is done, it will be revealed. <laughs> uh, some people scored pretty good, and some didn't do inherently bad, or they didn't do as bad as they used to. Might Some might have still done bad, but anyway. As they move on to the practical portion, they would then be met at a training facility where all the teachers will be present. As Deku says, you know, when I thought that we were going to be fighting these teachers, I never thought we would be fighting all of them. As, they, as the entire class replies, neither did we. So, yeah. Now... <clears throat> One, two, everyone is not being prepared for their battle, which would end for Deku. His battle will be not normal in, in a sense of Oli and Tussles. Deku, instead of fighting All Might, like he would, he would actually be fighting um, Aizawa. And then after fighting Aizawa, because of Deku's prowess, they would know that oh, really there's no point in him fighting All Might. The feats that he's shown so far show that he could easily be All Might. But 
but intelligence wise they want to test him so this is why he's going to be fighting Deku uh, he's going to be fighting Aizawa and would then fight Nezu in the way also no actually no we're going to have a fight uh, all night with Bakugo I, I think I should stick with the it's canon right here because of the fact being that um I wouldn't really know how to do it that way of what I'm doing. I know I want to do it that way, but I wouldn't know how to do it. It's coming off the top of the head, so I think you know I don't have it planned out enough yet. So yeah. <clears throat> now that's beside the point. Now everybody would obviously um obviously see their teams. The Bakugo would be shooting the anger. As I have never really talked about Bakugo since the beginning. Bakugo asked why is he on the team with Deku. And Deku will say, oh, Bakugo, I'm not going to lie. I forgot about you. As Bakugo says, you what? And Deku says, you're really not that important in my life. So, obviously, I forgot about you. As Doki says, but I believe I'll win. As Bakugo says, no, I'll win. They wonder who they're fighting against. Deku counsels the members before he then gets an idea. He says, we're fighting All Might, aren't we? As Nezu says, yes, as All Might then falls to the ground and says, I am here and I am yours. As Nezu says, I, All Might, he already knows. As All Might says, oh. Well, dang. Kind of ruined putting the fear in him in this, but I guess. As um, Nezu would then explain that um, All Might would be the only teacher here not wearing specialized weights. And it's due to him fighting Midoriya. So. From here on, everybody will go. And much if I'm being honest, I don't. I'm not going to go over it. I don't like going over it with the final series, but I'm going to go over it either way. So we'll be moving on to All Might versus um, Deku and Bakugo. As the match will start, as Deku and All um, Bakugo will then walk into the middle of the city. As Deku would then hear a voice say, Smash! As Deku would then say, Water style, water encampment wall. As a water wall would then form, somewhat taking the blow of All Might. But All Might's force of the punch would kind of disperse it. As Deku then says, Water style. Surging sea. I believe this is what Boruto uses, if I'm not mistaken. Where is it actually? Surging C is the juice the Boruto uses. So, um, <clears throat> obviously, um, All Might would be pushed back by the Ninja Jutsu. As Deku then says, Water Style. Um, only Water Fang Bullet. Or Drilling Fang Bullet. As he, um, the, um, water bullets begin to pierce through All Might as All Might begins to scream out in pain, especially because what had just pierced where his injury was. As only Deku sees this as All Might has gone into his, um, into his, um, skinny form briefly before then re, re transforming back, re transforming back into his buff form. As All Might then says, oh, You got me good, young Midori. But it's not over yet. As he holds his silence, he began running towards Deku, only for Deku to grab his, not grab his punch, but to redirect it. As Deku did, um, well, All Might punches the ground, delivers a kick to his face before then kicking him back. As he then throws two shurikens that explode, sending All Might back even further. As, <clears throat> as Deku then throws a kunai at All Might, as he grabs his sword, something that no one's ever seen him do before. As well as those watching this, how did he get so strong? Damn Deku. As All Might, as Deku then says, Flying Rajin Slash. As All Might realizes what that means. And as he, Deku, um, no, no, he doesn't know. Actually, he wouldn't kind of know what that means because he's heard Deku say that before, especially during the sports festival. As Deku disappears in a white flash, only to appear where the kunai is, as he slashes All Might, causing All Might to grab the wound. As Deku says, I'm so sorry, All Might. As he then puts All Might into a Genjutsu, where All Might then begins to relive all of his worst memories. 
as Bakugo um, sees that Deku, that All Might falls, right? He sees that Deku's about to put the cuffs on All Might. Only for Bakugo to kick Deku out of the way. Say, you won't be the one to beat him. I will. As Bakugo grabs the cuffs and puts them on, on All Might. As, um, as he would then announce that they win. And after everyone is done, well, with Deku and but actually Deku and Bakugo were the last ones to go, I think. So with everyone gone and done, the matches will be over, and it will be announced that Bakugo actually failed. His t um and Deku, yeah, I could say Deku. Actually, we're gonna have them both pass because I could say the same thing because Deku didn't include his teammate not once. Um yeah, so with this. And one of you would also be done. And would, um, after everybody's done and told about the summer camp, and also turned those who told that those who failed would also still be going. Mina would then give the idea for them all to go shopping together. But Deku isn't there, so he um, but Midoriya Kamigama isn't there, so there's no whole incident with Shikaraki. Shikaraki actually just leaves the um, just leaves the how do I say this? The, the mall. That's what I was trying to. I was, couldn't figure out what the word was. And I legit just said it. He would leave the mall, and there would be no whole incident at the mall this time. So the mall wouldn't be shut down. Everyone would continue on their shopping. As Deku was currently trying to create a new, or Toby Rama is currently trying to create a new jutsu. As jutsu, um, as jutsu, as Toby Rama is um, working on this. Eventually, it would come for the time for them to leave, and they would all get on board of the um. Now, how am I about to say the boat? On board the bus with their hero costume. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, actually, with Toby Rama having house and get a squirrel. As Toby Rama, and, you know, sits um at the very back, doesn't talk to no one. He doesn't really like to be bothered with these things. So. Um, yeah, and this is the entire ride up until when the, um, when they stop at the, at a, at a rest stop, or what they think is a rest stop. When they get there, they see that this is just a cliff with an, with another car there. And the car opens to reveal the wild, wild pussy cats. As once they're all, um, once they introduce themselves, Deku, who obviously, he's not a hero, he's not a, into heroes, but he does know about almost every single hero out there. Not like, not like canon Deku um he would obviously he would obviously um you know suspect something cause he they're on the edge of a cliff Pixie Bob's quirk is called Rock Flow something weird is happening here and so suspecting something weird is going to happen he would immediately body flicker, uh, or actually, no, he would immediately ready his chakra for a suspicion to see. As when Pixie Bob then says, have fun, as everyone, as everyone's wondering what's these sunbots, they begin backing up towards the bus. As Pixie Bob then uses her quirk rock flow to um, kick everyone off, basically off the cliff, cliff sided down into the forest. As they then see a log, they hear a clatter, as everyone looks back to see a log there, as Aizawa looks and says, I don't know where he's at, but he's up here somewhere. As the pixie Bob says, who are you talking about? He says, the one in the armor. The one from the, um, Toby Rama. Or, I mean, De Izuku Midoriya. And she's like, huh? The one in the blue armor from the sports festival. The one who won it. Oh, you're right, he's not. As Deku appears behind pixie Bob. <clears throat> as he then says, why did you do that? I didn't want to go down there. So why are you doing this? What is this, Aizawa? Aizawa says, uh, Stop, Midoriya. Calm down. Get on the bus. It gives you a ride with us. I ain't no part. There's no reason for you to... There's really no reason for you to... Um, to do anything rash. As they could not a Pixie Bob says, I didn't even... See him move behind me. As Mandalay and Cardo would think the same thing, and then you see her, him move behind her. As they, um, Deku gets on the bus with Aizawa, and they drive down to camp. As Deku is basically setting up his own room and starts his own training. 
As Pixie Bob and Mandalay sees Deku make shadow clones and begins fighting with them and creating a new Dooku. Something that will end. <clears throat> something that will end somebody. As Deku, while in, um, while, um, in the world, had once spread out his. Actually, no. Wait, let me. So. Um, Deku, well, obviously, had, while sensing throughout many cities that he has some shadow clones there, obviously for recon, he has sensed a great evil being built. And this was actually after the USJ, as he could sense this evil is being built up, and now this evil is necessarily really strong, he believes he could take them down. And that is exactly what this Dutu is for, to take this person down. Yeah, there we go. Um, sorry. <clears throat> as Deku um continues to train, as the entire class eventually shows up hours later, and I see Deku training, asking, "When did he get here?" As, as I was saying, as, well, we all knew it would be a waste of time if Midoriya, uh, if we, well, Midoriya kind of, um, we don't know how to describe this, his ability. But he appeared back on a clip after you all hit that log was signifying that he had basically switched himself with the log. And he says it's called the substitution due to as he walks over. I just substituted myself with the log. And appeared above and I appeared behind um Pix Pixie Bob and Izawa just said to, to get on the bus because it would have been a waste of time trying to send him down there. It was what? It's not fair at all. And as I was saying, do you try to send them through that void? As Deku looks back at them, they then see as Deku has just swung his sword. Now I'm just kidding. I was going to do it as he was going to say, what forest? As the forest would have been cut in half and everything and whatnot. It would kind of been a waste. So, once they all get there, they would all eat. And Deku would notice the little kid from earlier wasn't eating, so he would see he would follow the sense out from the sense out the kid before then closing the body switcher to appear next to him. So he would say, "Kid, here you go. You should eat." And the kid said, "I don't want any food from you." And Deku said, "Um, why is that? I, I to be honest, I didn't even make it." Skoda says, "I don't care. Leave me alone." Deku says, fine. As Deku then, um, Deku then dis uh, disappears as he reappears back at the camp and they all have to do their, um, they have their, what is it called? Their, what's their response house? Hot spring, that. They go and get to a hot spring. As once they're all done, we will get into the next day of training where they will be met by class 1B. As Class 1B has heard of Midoriya and wondering where exactly is he, and as I would say that Midoriya is out there training, as he points to a lake on the property, as everyone sees Midoriya controlling the element of water around him, and the water, he's doing many things, he's creating water walls, water dragons, he's basically covering himself in mist, as they also see that there are five other versions of him on land doing different things, one is controlling earth, one is trying to control lightning, or one is um, missing playing with lightning. Another is with fire. One is with wind. Is they're wondering what exactly is his quirk? So they ask as always, as always says, well, Midori is actually quirkless. He he used an ancient practice, an ancient energy that was lost to his um to humans thousands of years ago. As everyone is you know a little shocked by this, but you know continues on. As um everyone continues training in the, into the night, um and Izuku seeing Koda isn't being hasn't eaten again would decide to make him since Deku's food is, since Deku baked obviously lived by himself he obviously had to learn to cook so he would make some more food and take it to Koda himself as he and Koda are sitting up there Koda says why are you back I thought I told you to leave yesterday and Deku says look. You need to eat. I don't know what your problem is, but you should eat. Dakota says, and what do I care? Why would you care? Deku says, 
and this kid, I don't. But seeing someone not eat, when there's clearly a chance for them to eat, is kind of worrying. We should eat. But before Deku can do anything, V Ben hears a chuckle as he senses malicious, malicious intent coming towards him. As he then grabs Koda before then appearing at the top of the mountain, as right where him and Koda were, as Fist had just landed down. He then tells Koda to be quiet. As he as Koda he sees Koda struck in the face, he asks, "What is it?" Koda says, "He, he's the one that killed my parents." As Deku nods, he just tells him to lay low and to be quiet. As he then tells Koda to keep this on her just in case. As Koda will nod, as Deku will then. Um, drop down the opposite side of the mountain before then running back up at Muscular before then saying, once thou great bre um, breakthrough, as the wind hits Muscular off the island as, uh, off the um, <clears throat> off the uh, cliff as he then um, lands on the ground as Deku then shoves his hand down saying, Earth, um, Earth style much like Jutsu as um, Muscular is sliding down further down the map or down the, um, not the map, down the hill that he's now on. As he then makes a Shadow Clone, when the Shadow Clone says, Fire Style, Great Breakthrough, as he then says, Fire, um, no, not Fire Style, he says, Wind Style, Great Breakthrough, as he then says, Fire Style, Fireball Jutsu, as he then combines both Jutsus, hitting Muscular, sending him back even further. This Muscular's just a pretty strong kid. You think I have to take you pretty serious? I have to take you seriously. He takes out his eye and puts in his serious eye. As muscular and run towards Deku, only for Deku to jump out of the way before delivering two kicks to the head and kicking him away with a third kick. As he then says, "Now, <clears throat> I recommend you leave." As muscular says, "No way." As he tries to punch Deku, only for Deku to slide into his guard before delivering two cool eyes to press to a pressure point causing one of his arms to go numb. As Deku has supercharged his kunai's with lightning style chakra. So his arm won't come back for maybe a couple of days due to this. As Muscular says, what did you? As he tries to deliver another punch, only for Deku to say, water style. What What is a good duty for this? I'm gonna try and make one right off the head. Constricting serpent. As, um, as basically, Toby Ramos, um, the water around him begins to gather water from the air as he then they then take the form of two snakes that's just then constrict around or imagine four snakes was constrict around muscular's body holding him in place as Deku would then disappear into the ground using the hiding like a mole technique before then appearing and grabbing muscular's leg before then dra dragging him underground leaving only his head as he says earth style headhunter jutsu complete as he then delivers a well placed kick, knocking Muscular out. As Deku then sees fire, as he then says, Water style, water shock wave, as a giant wave of water is then doused upon the flames, hitting away every villain in the area, which includes Dobby, Mr. Kukres, who is about to capture Bakugo. As Deku then says, Water style, um, was it, what was it, Surfing Sea? I've read this in. I legit just seen Surfing Sea, so I'm gonna see what this is exactly before I say what the Jutsu is exactly. So, I obviously, I thought that this technique had a name, it was in the, um, but apparently this technique that I'm about to say is not. So, I'm gonna give it a name being Water Style Water Drill, which is where Toby Rama focuses water, water around his arm, and it takes the form of a drill as he then uses it to basically stab someone. And it's the inner drilling motion, which makes the wound a lot work a lot, or it makes it worse. So he would obviously hit the following target with this, being Toga, taking Toga out immediately. As he then sees, um, he's then about to be hit with a bunch of teeth. As Deku then says, um, then uses the substitution jutsu. Before then saying, lightning style. Um, an imperial way. I believe that's a water jutsu. Not from the crap that all the sports is featuring. Then is it? It could. He could learn that maybe, but not right now. Lightning style. What? Lightning style. Lightning wave. 
As he then touches his hand to the ground, as the lightning begins to conduct throughout the metals that are in the ground. As he then strikes down upon the opponents that are there, constantly causing them to actually fall. As the villain says, um, one of the villains being Gobby begins to war, um, begins to talk to him and says, Curry Gary, get us out of here. It bit off more than we can chew. He says, did you get any of the targets? No. He says, I don't know. As Deku then says, what are you, who are you talking to? Before then appearing in front of Dobby. As Dobby is about to hit Tobirama with the flames, but Tobirama didn't grab his arm. Unknown to Dobby, Tobirama had just placed a fire and rising seal on it. As, De as Tobirama then delivers a backhand to, to Dobby's face, and he comes flying into a tree. Before then dodging one of Spinner's blades, as he then parries it with his own blade. As Spinner had tried to strike again. As he then says, flying and rising and slashes, before then throwing a kunai, and then a pain right by Spinner, before then cutting him. As Deku would then say, sorry about this. What is it called when you, not suffocation, water release, drowning. As he then touches his, um, his hand to Spinner's body. Wait, Spinner's a turtle. As a turtle clip, right? So does that does I uh, that wouldn't work against him, right? Wait. Okay, never mind. Apparently, um, as quick as Gecko, which is a lizard, which I don't believe they can survive this. So he would then place his hand on Spinner's mouth before then forcing as much water chocolate into Spinner's um mouth and through his nose, as he then begins to slowly drown Spinner before then uh taking it out as Spinner has lost consciousness, not wanting to kill him. As he could see that someone had been manipulating them. As Dobby, Toga, and Twice, and Mr. Capesso all get out of there, leaving the other villains to be taken care of by the hero, by Eraserhead, Mandalay, Pixie Bob, and all of them being taken care of. As after the students didn't know that students be there, they would actually continue on with the um, summer camp. And once it's all done, Deku would then come to Mr. Eyes, uh, once they all head back from the summer camp, but Deku finally creating the move that he wanted to. He would then tell Aizawa that he had, um, he would then tell Aizawa that he would like to speak with the pro, he the pro heroes at the school along with Nezu and himself. As Aizawa would not, as once they get back, him and Deku would meet, well, he immediately calls a meeting between the staff, between all the staff members at UA. As once everyone arrives, Deku would then explain that he placed one of his markers that allows him to teleport on, on one of the villains, being Dobby. The one that was able to use the flames. As they were all asked, you know, wait, can he, what has he done? Has he gotten, has he went there yet? And as Deku says, no. As um, they say, can we track this? And Deku says, only I can kind of track it. Actually, no, I can't really. You see, I may know where the seal is, but I have to teleport directly to the seal. As they take this to the hero commission, as they all decide to be put into a, uh, into a raid, into, uh, they decide to do a raid. As before the raid commences, a couple days, Deku is then um, a car then pulls up to UA one, and Deku is told that he someone wants to speak with him. As he's there, as the um, hero commission, the president of the hero commission or the hero association, I believe the com what is it called, the hero commission association or. Oh, Hero Public Safety Commission. The president of them wants to speak with Deku. As he would then begin to explain, with her obviously being one of the few people who may know about, who knows about All Might being him, but he kind of is a hero and kind of works for her. He's a hero, so he works kind of works for them, in a way. She would know about All Might's condition. And she would then tell Deku about the history between All Might's quirk, and one for all, and all for one. One for all, and um, all for one. And she would then tell Deku that she wants to give him a mission. A mission to kill all for one. To finally get rid of him. As Deku then asks, what is in it for me? And she says, I don't know, what do you want? And Deku says, well, the provisional licenses are coming here, but I would hate to have to take the test. She says, good, I could get you a pro hero license. And Deku says, no. 
I want to continue my years here. Maybe after. Actually, I'll keep you on hold for that. But for now, I want a provisional hero license. Just done. It'll be given to you once you take them out. As Deku would nod. As Deku would then um, take on his armor. As a bunch of pro heroes are now with him. Being best genius. All, well, actually, it's all the pro heroes that were there. It's just there's no Bakugo that was kidnapped. And none of the students are there either. So, um, with all the villains being there, and Dobby's in the um, bar with them, Deku would then say, ready? As everyone who's now holding hands, Deku then disappears. They all disappear in a white flash, feeling nothing until they start feeling something. As the villains are saying, what? As Kamen Woods immediately, you know, wraps them up in his um, tree and branch in his wood. Pause. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways. Um, the, um... All the villains begin to do something to get, um, begin to try to struggle as Shigaraki then touches one of uh, Kamui's branches when it starts to decay. Well, wait, it's not decay. It begins to touch it, hoping that the quirk would actually finally work, seeing as how Deku sealed away his quirk earlier during the USJ. And he still hasn't had it unsealed. He's basically quirkless now. <sighs> as he looks to see the person who did this to me, as he says, damn you. Whoever you are. As this is when All Might and Deku will hear a voice. All Might. Oof, you, it's nice to see you again. As All Might will just say, all for one. Why don't you show yourself? Which, that, as he says, why? Why don't I show myself when I'm already here? As the building then explodes. As a bunch of no moves appear and take take these the your villains out of the way before then revealing all for one floating in the sky. As all for one immediately dispatches the other heroes, including Toblerama, only for well, including Toblerama and you guys like, yo, whoa, and it means he's out of it. Just wait and see. As all might then begins to fight, um, begins to fight all for one. As Grand Torino is there, as he had been informed about this. So, obviously, they would be there. He would be there. As Deku then says, well, then, all for one. As all for one turns around, only to be met by a water dragon, grabbing him and then throwing him into the ground. As Deku then appeared before him, before then delivering two strikes to the stomach, and then a kick to the chin, sending him up in the air. As as off of one spinning, he finally starts spinning as he sees the um zoo, the, the person below him disappear in a puff of smoke, only for his head to be met with the with with his with Izuku's heel. As Izuku then drives it down, sending all for one back down into the ground. As he lands, as all my says, Midoriya, what are you doing here? You're supposed to leave as soon as we got here. As Deku says, sorry, all my, but I was given a separate mission by the hero, com um, by the commissioner. I needed to kill all for one. As all for one says, you can't. But before he could do anything, Deku would slice off his arm. Flying rising slice. As Deku had marked all for one on that arm. When he touched it, when he delivered those two strikes, he spread his chakra throughout all for one and guided it to his arm. So he did place a seal on it. As Tobarama then says, water style. Water fang bullet. As the water from under, from the uh, from the water and uh, from the plants under, be then begin to make these giant bullets, as they then begin to pierce all for one. As all one screaming in pain, as he suddenly stops, only for him to then begin to regenerate, as the it begins to constantly be regenerating. As Deku then squints his eyes, saying, "So he has a regenerative quirk, just like that no moves." Of course he would. Why wouldn't he? As Deku then says, well then, I'll take care of him here and now. As all for one then says, what are you going to do? As Deku then makes a shadow clone, makes five, four other shadow clones. And they begin to th go through hand sign as they then begin to make separate jutsu. One, one style, great breakthrough. One, fire style. Um, Phoenix flower jutsu. Another, earth style. Um, Earth spike, earth spike pillars. I don't know. I'm gonna say that jutsu. 
without you. I don't know if that's a YouTube. It might be a YouTube like that, and I just don't know the name of it. I see one that is said, um, says Lightning Style, Lightning Shockwave, and the other then said, and it's probably the original Purple Rumble that says Water Style, Water Severing Wave. As all these elements then collide with, with Off One, sending him back, as Off One then begins to power up, strengthening his, using a strength booster to at least 50. He says, so take you out here now. As they, as the clones then begin to reach for their blades. As they all then surround off one end as if they were in a circle. As they, he then, as off one then sees that the blades are now emanating certain elements. One is white, which is fire. The other is water. One is lightning. One is lightning, one is earth, one is fire. One is wind. And then the last. Okay, so earth, wind, lightning, fire. And then the last is water. So the, the one is emanating water, one is emanating lightning, one is earth, one is fire, one is lightning. Did I say? Okay, um, water, fire, lightning, wind, earth. There we go. As they do then, um, as all of them then yell out, Elemental Divide, which is the jutsu that he had been coming up with. Which is when he combined all five elements into his sword. Well, one of the elements into his sword within five shadow clones, with his and, and then cut sword. And we all see what happens when with all five elements are basically created. It stops all regenerative regenerative capabilities. I think that's what the true sequel orbs are made of. So I want to make sure actually. So apparently I was wrong. True Secret Orbs also house Yin and Yang Lilies. Yin and Yang Lilies, actually. So, um, since there is no that, it wouldn't create the same effect. But, yeah, it wouldn't create the same effect. So, all would happen is, all for one would then be sliced. As in five different directions, everyone then sees pillars of the elements. A pillar of lightning is shot in one direction. A pillar of fire in the other, a pillar of earth in one, a pillar of wind in another, in the opposite direction, and then a pillar of water. As all for one falls to the ground, being sliced into multiple different pieces. As before all for one could do anything, Deku would then place a ceiling, to, uh, would place a seal on his head, being a seal that will basically keep him from using his quirk. Which means that all for one would die right then and there. As Deku then says, that's over with now. You guys might think, yo, that's not that powerful. Now you guys might be it might be true. But with the um you said like what does Earth style? Earth style doesn't have much of a um cutting capability. What is made from Earth? Metals. A is there a metal release? I don't think the metal release is what I think it is, actually. I don't think metal release is what I think it is. So, um, maybe, I'm not sure. Um, but some of the metals would be there to sharpen the blade even further than what it is. Or, um, actually, no, it would be like mud. It's like a mud coating. Making, it's not more dull, making the blade duller. It's making the blade more durable, actually, more durable. But that's not the point of the Jutsu. The Jutsu actually, once sliced, once cut, is a buildup of that specific element's chakra. That's, that once the buildup comes, finally erupts, it then sends out chakra of that, that element out in different directions. So this is how five, all five elements are combined. They don't want to just explode in one direction. They could, if you can control the jutsu a lot better, they can just explode in one direction. But instead, they all exploded in five different directions. That's that's really the main point of the jutsu. Which I mean, he could could perform with anything, but it's more he started he created the jutsu while using his sword. So that's that's kind of why. So from this, it would be the end of the, the whole, there will, it wouldn't be really a, the, yeah, it would be the Kamino War incident. 
and Deku will be rewarded through his provisional license. So eventually, after the Kamino Award incident, um, eventually we will go on a time skip to when everyone um, that is introduced to the dorm since they have already been introduced to the dorm you know, months before school started. Approximately four months. So, obviously, <clears throat> so obviously, he wouldn't. They wouldn't be introducing you into that. So they would all be um, skipping to the provisional licenses and their work studies. Now, since Deku is no longer there, I really wouldn't have to go over that. So everyone there who eventually got their provisional license and kind of would get the there get those there and those who didn't wouldn't get it. So once this is all complete, Deku would then decide. Um, as I would once everyone got back from getting their provisional license, as I would then begin to introduce the idea of doing. I'm telling them that they're going to be doing work studies soon. As he then introduces the big three, as Mirio then um, Mirio Nedre and. Um, why do I always forget who this is? Tamaki. I'm a GP, obviously, I think. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Him. The nervous one. Um, the one that looks like Sasuke. A little bit, but nervous. A lot more nervous. As um, they introduce themselves, as they then introduce um, who they, they would then tell the class who they all work for under work studies. But Mario is saying that he uh, works on the Night Eye. Um... Majiki obviously works under Fat Gum. Yeah, that's why he works under Fat Gum and Nedure under um, UQ, I believe. Yuko, UQ, UQ, Yuku. Dang, I'm so terrible for now. I need to go to sleep. I'm not gonna lie. It is what time is it? I've been recording this for ever since I woke up at two, and I constantly take breaks. To keep my mind fresh, and I still miss make errors. And it's currently one o'clock a.m. and I've been no doing since this was two p.m. So yeah. Now, anyways, I did take a lot of breaks, so any that that's true. Approximately, I believe approximately maybe eleven breaks. About to see how many. Oh, I took twenty three breaks throughout the day. Wow. So, yeah. Um. Anyways, that's beside the point. Um. Mirio and uh, Nedry would then begin to fire off questions. As he would then ask Toporama, why does he carry that base scroll? As he then explains that this holds everything that's in it. His, basically, all his belongings along with his hero costume. As he asks, how is that possible? As Deku would then unravel it before then um, placing his hand on what everyone can see is old writing. That, that they can't even read as something pops out being his sword as Deku says see as he then places his hand on the seal again before the sword is then resealed away as he says oh that's so cool could, he, could I do that as Deku says absolutely not as Deku would um, as um, Miriam say wow you must be pretty strong well, you are pretty strong I seen what you did on TV and during the sports festival I also heard what you did during the whole summer camp incident. Would you like to fight me? As Deku says, fine, but this is only just a pastime as I've gotten bored and hasn't ha haven't had a good fight in weeks. As once they all come back from this, get, um, get done with this, obviously, um, they would all be... Ah, yes, they would all get ready. Every the entire class would then be invited by Mirio to fight him also. So it would be Mirio versus the entire class then if Mirio beats them, Mir um Mirio versus his Tobirama. So obviously Mirio with the class would happen much the same. He would obviously beat them all. And when it comes to Tobirama, this is where things change. As Tobirama then tries to hit Mirio, um, as the man starts, as Mirio rushes towards Tobirama, as Tobirama then slashes at Mirio. As Mirio then permeates his um, head through, uh, permeates into the ground, and then comes out behind Tobirama, only for Tobirama to jump above where Mirio was at. As Deku then um, begins to, um, what is this exactly? Hmm. 
Nick begins to dodge most of Mirio's attacks. As he sees an opening as Mirio is throwing a, a punch. As Mirio is thinking Deku is about to dodge or try to redirect it, only for Deku to touch his hand, not knowing that a marker had been placed on him. As Deku would then say, gravity to activate. As to, um, not to, uh, Mirio would then be, um, be sent to the ground due to gravity on him increasing. As Mirio says, what's this? As Deku says, I wouldn't use your quirk because you might be sent directly into the center of the sun. As Mirio says, okay, you win. As Deku then touches Mirio again before then saying, gravity seal, release. As he then, um, as he then gets rid of the seal. As Mirio says, wow, you're pretty strong. You didn't even really attack me. Like, with full intent, as Deku says, yes. It will be pointless. As he says, why don't you come work with me during the um, work studies in Sir Nairon? As Deku says, I'll give it a try. But I'll tell you this now. If I don't like it, then I'll stop working with you in Sir, Ni in Sir Night Eye. Anyways, moving on. Now that everyone is, has done is a Deku will be introduced to um, Sir Night Eye, they will all go on and would then pick who they will all work, um, do a work study under. Well, obviously with Deku, with Tok um, not Tok Tokoyami, I mean, Todoroki and Bakugo doing remedials, um, remedial studies. So, eventually Deku would then meet with Sir Night Eye. And since there's no... More or less, since more or less there is no um, one for all things, Sir Nadai doesn't um, um, still wants to test him on his speed, and then um, still actually wants to test him. But Deku gets the thing a lot faster as when he had shook Sir Nadai's hand before, he had placed a marker on it. And since the flying rising due to is a space time and due to his ability to see in the future would not help him with this at all. So, um, Deku would obviously get the stamp and would still and would get the approval of Sir Nardai. As Sir Nardai would then tell Deku that tomorrow him and Mirio go on patrol. As he would not, as Deku would then throw something at um, Sir Nardai. As he says, if you need me, throw that. And also, if I need to get to you, I'll, I'll just teleport to you. And Sir Night Eye will not. As um, the next day, he comes back to Sir Night Eye's agency in his hero costume, and him and Mirio go on patrol. And while on patrol, they stop a couple of bad guys, a bank robbery. N nothing, nothing, um, the usual, obviously. As, um, once they go into a, the steeper part of the city, they pass an alleyway where Deku is eventually something runs into Deku. Oh, yeah. As Deku then says, um, whoa, you okay? As he then sees a girl with utter fear emanating off of her. As Deku says, Mirio, she's fear, she has a, she's scared of something. As he sees the girl jumps up to him and hugs him and is holding on tight. She says, whoa. As the girl then says, please don't let him get you. Deku says, who is, as he then hears his voice says, there you are, come with me now, you must be leaving, as Deku then asks, who is he, as he says, I am her father, as he then sees the fear imminent, a lot more fear enter every system, as he says, and why is she shaking, and why does she emanate fear, why does she emanate more fear when you, when you, when she hears your voice, as he says, because she was recently scolded for doing something bad. As he says, why does she have these bandages? He says, well, the doctor recommend Eri hurt herself a lot, and the doctor, um, she had gotten a lot of scars that she doesn't like. So we put the bandages on, on to cover them up so she can feel better. She, as she, Deku then hears a voice as Mir, as Eri then says, he's lying. As Deku then says, hold up. As he then turns around, as, as Oberon then says, I don't have time for this. As he's about to reach for his throne. And Eri not seeing this doesn't actually do anything. But he then 
but when before overhaul turned, Deku would then turn around before they sank. Okay, with shock to Eren. As Deku, as um, not Mario. As um, Eri, what Eri doesn't notice is that Deku still has his hand on Mario's back. As Deku then says, "Here," as he begins to walk Eri towards Overall, the Overall says, "Thank you." As before he touches Overall, touches Eri, they disappear in a white flash. As Overall begins to see her name, he goes, "Find her." As he then asks, "Wait, who lost her?" As one of the um. One of his underlings began to point at someone as that person is then basically what is his quirk actually does. That's why I will never do an overhaul video really with maybe an over well. Oh, he disassembles him. That's what it does. He disassembles him. Can't reassemble somebody. So he basically kills the man who lost Airy. Says next time, don't lose her. As he says, now find, go find Eri. As a man nods before, as the other man nods before leaving, the other three men nods before leaving. As as overall then begins to think, I'll find you, Eri, and then I'll make everything a lot worse than what it is. As Eri then, um, as Eri, as Deku appears next to Nida, as Nida then says, Whoa, Midori, what are you? Who is she? As Deku says, I believe we ran into that, um, into, we ran into a villain, I think. He had an, a plague mask? As he would have said, as, um, Night Owl said, you ran into Overhaul? As Deku says, yeah. He was claiming to be this girl's doctor. I don't know what he, uh, his girl's father, not doctor. He, I don't know what he was doing to her, but she's, uh, she's shaking in fear, and she has not let go of me. Even when Mirio, tr um, no, nah, they had just appeared, so Mirio hasn't. Even while Miri is currently trying. It's not I didn't realize. Miri is trying to take Eri away from Deku. But she won't let go. It's not I saw just for saying, Midori, I think it's best she stay with you for now. Head back to UA. We have some things. I have some things to discuss with the other four heroes. As Deku nods before then disappearing in a yellow flash, appearing back in his room. Which, unlike canonism, which is actually had some expansions to it. So it's more like a house for Deku. As Deku then take er, um, take goes to his room, as he f realizes Eri is fast asleep, she places Eri on his bed before letting her go to sleep. Before then coming out, as as I says, "Problem child, I thought you were with um, I mean, you know, yeah, he kind of is. Not 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 really actually. He says, excuse me, like Midori, I thought you were with Nada and doing a patrol. As Deku says, I was, but we ran into some tr to some trouble, and now a girl is currently under my care. She says, huh? says yes a girl currently under my care obviously because she became a little too attached to me because of the things that were done to her i don't know what was done to her but something was done to her as i always say show me to the girl as he would then uh walk towards deck um deck's room as he entered to see airy there sleep as i was sorry say is there anything else as deck says she'll be with us until um until night i says otherwise as he would not, as Deku would then say, I think it's time to go claim that favor, to up uh, to go and get something from the president, before disappearing, uh, before then appearing in the Hero Commission's office, right where the president is at. As the president was currently in the meeting, as they all see a white flash appear, as they all then get on guard, as, as the president recognizes it as Toby Rama, she says, Toby Rama, what are you doing here? As Deku, as Tobiyama then say, I'm here to up the favor. As she would then say, what is it? As Deku says, I want my hero license. He says, done. He says, now can you leave? I'm kind of in an important business, in an important, mis um, in an important meeting, uh, business meeting. Deku will look around. As he then nods, before then disappearing again. As Deku would then, um, eventually a couple days later, would be sent his hero license, by, would be given his hero license by Nezu. As Nezu would then tell Deku that he has, the, the president gave him the choice whether to continue to stay at UA or to go on to be, start his own agency and everything. As Deku says, he'll stay at UA probably till after this issue is resolved, and then he'll will go on and to start his own agency, which means that this series is slowly coming to an end. As Deku would then um, tell, 
Tom Nezu that it was a pleasure working with, it was a pleasure learning at this institute that he's already learned as much as he possibly can already. He already has a perfect control over his power. There's no more control. He can still create things. He can still create new ways to use his power, but there's nothing any of these teachers can teach him. As he would not. And Deku would then say, oh, and then, um, tell, um, tell Azawa thank you for allowing me to stay with him. And tell him to join my hero agency once I started. But Azawa would not. As Deku would then go to, um, as not Aizawa, Nezu would not, before then going back to the room. As later that day, as, um, Deku would be called by Night Eye, and as Night Eye tells him to meet up with him at his, at his agency. As when Deku arrives, he sees a bunch of other pro heroes, along with Kirishima, um, I believe Ochako is in this, so, um, and along with Nejire and Brother Big Three, obviously, and their mentors. As Deku says, and you all were called here for what? Uh, they said, we all were trying to figure that out, too. As Deku then says, well, let's not keep them waiting. As they all walk into the meeting room, Snyder says, oh, good, you're here. As he looks around, he says, oh, um, Tobirama. As Deku says, yes, I heard you became a pro hero recently. Congrats. As this shocks his classmates that are currently there, he says, dude, you became a pro hero? As Deku says, he was kind of part of a deal I made with the president of the Hero Commission. Um when um, I killed that man as, as the leader of the Nuka villains. As he would nod, before, as Kirishima would nod before saying, that's so manly. But not the killing part. Well, actually, that kind of wouldn't be manly. It's, oh. Well, good job, dude. You've become such a manly man. As Deku would say, um, thanks, I guess. I don't, don't really know how to respond to that. Um, Kirishima. He was saying, oh. As Nardai then said, on to it, as he then begins to explain that they're going to be raiding Overhaul's base. As Deku says, I can get us directly towards over on Overhaul. She was saying, what? As Deku says, when Mirio doesn't know, well, as he says, I'll explain what I did. You see, when Mirio, when me and er, Mirio were, um, had Eri, I t and he was in front of us, I told him we would give Eri back. So I began to walk towards him with a plan of walking towards him before then disappearing, rather than just disappearing on the spot to irritate him. He makes a lot. Of, people make a lot of mistakes once ang when they're angry. As they would all nod, as Deku then says, "But what he didn't know was when I had placed my foot right in front of him, I had sent some of this my well, what you guys my some of my power into the into the floor." Before them making a seal appear on his leg, on his off, on his foot that he probably hasn't noticed yet. Well, on his skin actually. And once it marked on his skin, I disappeared. As if the mark also disappears and it becomes invisible, unless I wanted to be stay could be stay visible. As Nada says, well then, me, Mirio, and you will be taking on uh, me, you, you, and Mamelia will be taking on overall. While the rest of them storm the base, as they could nod, as they could say, then we best prepare. As a couple of days of preparations are done, everyone is now ready. As Deku then says, now comm let's commence the raid. As the raid finally starts, as uh, overhaul hearing, um, seeing, hearing and seeing, hearing about their being basically being raided by a bunch of pro heroes, then begins to flee the scene. Without Airy, there's not a lot much hold up. As he gets out and is about to escape only for three people to appear in front of him as he then gets angered at the white haired one and says you and as he begins to run towards Deku only for Deku to deliver a devastating uppercut to him as Deku um, would send him up in the air before Deku then kicks him sending him back away from him as he gets up and says where is Eri Deku says out of your out of your reach as Deku then says water style Water Dragon Jutsu. Before the Water Dragon would then hit upon um, Overhaul. His Overhaul um, arm would be ripped off by the Water Dragon. As he would then um, re basically reassemble his own arm. 
says, you'll pay for this. As he then touches, begins to touch the ground, it says, guards are there. As he disassembles them and begins to reassemble them with him. Stecky then says, well, this seems to be a problem. And Momo says, you, you will not beat me. As Deku then says, Night Eye, get back. I, Mirio, obviously listen. Before then, saying, Summoning Jutsu, reanimation! As two coffins begin to appear, as out of it appears his brother, Hashirama Sensei, and then his student, Hirzen Saratobi. As Hirzen and Tobiram and Hashirama appear, saying, Wow, I didn't. Where are you? As, to as he reason says, I don't know. They begin to look around only to see Toby Rama. But Toby Rama looks a, l a little bit younger than what he used than what he did. As they then uh, as he says, Toby Rama, what are we doing here, brother? And Deku says, You're in another era era, brother. I need your help to fight against this guy. He can reassemble and deassemble things with, with the touch. I'm take. I'm gonna take use of your some of your reanimation bodies and along with your jutsus. There are no limitations on it. As the two nod, as they then as Deku then line gets in line with them, as Deku and Lamin, as Deku then tells Lamillion and Nana to go help the others. As they nod, as they then leave, as Deku and them begins and Hashirama and to, uh, Tobirama Hashirama and here's them then. Begin to go on the attack with Deku delivering a devastating kick to Overhaul's ribs. But before um, Toby Rama can, um, before Overhaul can do anything, Toby Rama disappears in a white flash, only for him to be punched, only for um, Overhaul to be punched in the gut, um, in the face by Hirazen. Only for him to be then hit away by a wood jutsu by Hashirama. And Hashirama then says, Wood style, deep forced emergence. As a as a force then begins to emerge from all around him, as it provides more cover for them, as Deku then um, begins to plant paper bombs all around him. And Deku says, I will never use this in my alive body, but I might have a chance of surviving this. Oh, that's right. Mutually multiplying explosive tags. As um, Deku then throws a tag at over overhaul. As an explosion begins to escape. As multiple explosions begin. And as it continues on. As Deku has gotten farther away from overhaul. And Sashirama then says, What style? Wood binding. Um, what is it? What, I think it was a wood binding jutsu. With a wood. Or oh, um, silent strangle jutsu. As the wood begins to wrap around Overhaul, keeping him in place of the explosives, and Overhaul is constantly reassembling his body parts. As the explosion finally stops, as they see a tired Overhaul, as he was able then say, summoning Jutsu before then summoning his staff, before summoning mo the Monkey King Emma. Oh, my, wait, Monkey King Emma, wait a minute. Luffy's name is Monkey D. Luffy. He wants to become the king of the pirates. Zoro has a sword named Emma. What the heck? Anyways, that's beside the point. As the, as Toby Rama then hit Overhaul in the gut. I'm um, not Toby. Not Toby Rama. He was able to hit Overhaul in the gut with his staff, but Emma turned transformed into a staff. As the, Toby Rama then appeared before delivering. Three kicks, one to his gut, one to his arm, and one to his face. As multiple shadow clones then kick him up into the sky. As um, Hashirama then says, Wood style, Wood Dragon Jutsu is below. Tobirama says, Water style, Water Dragon Jutsu. As they both then says, Collaboration Jutsu, Dragon Clashing. Clashing Dragons, I like that, I like that. As both the dragons then clash upon Overhaul. As Overhaul falls to the ground, dead. As eventually the raid will be over, with no casualties actually lost this time. There are severely injured people, but there are no casualties. As Overhaul would eventually be burnt by Deku, getting rid of the evidence. 
that's definitely didn't help to help your I don't help tears in and I should I'm saying for the telling Hashem it's a pleasure to work beside it's a pleasure to um fight beside him once again it was the next his brother was to stay with him to become better so that he can help him in his in his in this life's goal of becoming a hero it's not sure I would not as Tabarama then pull out a mask before then saying um you will be the new um you will be the Ambu commander I want to be Ambu captains under me you will be Golem and you Hiruzen will you join me also as Hiruzen will not as he says then you will be Maki one of the Ambu captains below me you two will be my right hand men as both Hashirama and Tobi um, and here is it one nod. As they would all begin to walk up towards everyone. And everyone would run towards Deku before asking who are these. As Deku says, they're gonna be working with him from now on as his sidekicks in his agency. As Deku as this would eventually end the raid, as Deku then gets um, information that Eri needs to go to the hospital and so that they can find her proper home. But Deku um, would tell uh, Eri this. Eri would be a little bit scared. As Deku says that she'll, he'll be there with him, with her. And Zajirama then says, Oh, brother, look at you. A father already. You know, you never found love in your pre in your life as the in your original life. Why not find love in this one? As Tabirama says, I don't know, brother. I don't know if that's for me. It's a life, brother. Before they all leave with Eri, before walking towards the, um, before then walking towards the hospital where Eri's eventually checked out, and Nada then says that, um, um, they then leave and come back the next day, where Nada then informs them that Eri doesn't want to go with anyone else but to besides Tabarama. Tabarama sighs and says, I guess I'll adopt her. As Nada says, huh? Tabarama says, I guess I'll adopt her. As... Not I would say, oh, okay then. So, you're going to stop doing work study at my office and you're going to become your own pro hero. Deku would say, yeah, I think it's I think it's time I spread my own wings and work for under myself. Not I would then say, right. As you said as well, you can go in to visit Eri now. As Deku would not, as him and Hashiram and, um, and here is and we'll walk in. As, um, Eri then says, Mr. Tobirama, Hashirama, Mr. Hashirama and Mr. Hiruzen, um, what are you doing here? And then says, oh, Eri, <clears throat> I got good news for you. She then gets on a knee before then getting to her level. I decided to adopt you. She says, um, what does adopt mean? As Deku then says, I've decided to become your father legally, rather than just forcefully taking you. As Eri says, so I'll have a dad? As Deku says, yeah, you'll have a dad. As Eri begins to cry. As he says, but I'm a monster. As Toby Rama says, you're no monster. I've seen true monsters, and you're not one of them. As Eri will not. As Toby Rama then like, tell her, well, I would like to introduce you to your new uncles. To your uncles now. This is your uncle Hashirama and your uncle Hiruzen. She would then run up to Hashirama and Hiruzen, saying, um, Mr. Tabirama, why is Mr. Hiruzen so old? Before Hiruzen will fall to the ground, say, am I really? As he looks and says, oh, right, he summoned me in my prime, which is me, and I was old, kind of. Wow. As Deku says, that's the story for when you grow up, Eri. As Eri would not. As Tabirama would then close the book, before then saying, Eri, and that's the story of how I became a pro hero. And Eri says, wow, that's really what happened? Deku says, that's everything that happened. That's my story. And many things happened after that. You see, I eventually formed my own agency, which I named the Hanbu Headquarters. I then formed a group of, of a bunch of sidekicks and pro heroes that trained as ninjas. They became known as Ambu, and we worked from the shadows. We never truly gained praise, but we were still from anyone. We worked for the Hero Commission sometimes. Alright guys, it is currently 5.37 in the morning. I have 
been up since 2 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday. We started recording the what if, then taking breaks. Because it's extremely hot where I'm at, so I had to take a lot of water breaks. But I hope you guys have enjoyed today's what if story. I will try to improve my what ifs even more by maybe scripting some out. That'll probably happen later on sometime. I know I'll get to it eventually. But I hope you guys have enjoyed today. I'll see you guys later. Drink out again.